Okay, lesson for our young people that might be listening. Let's say you're in your teens and you're in school still. Yeah. Whenever the director of your department, in this case, Amy Daniels, says something, two things really nice about you at the beginning, Run. it's going to be a problem. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Oh, he, he's so nice. He, he's such a great guy. But what a pain in the ass most of the time. You're going to get nailed in the nuts at the very end. They never pull you in for a meeting if they just want to list off things great no. about you. <laughs> no, that's very that's... true. So as soon as they start saying nice <laughs> yeah. things, there's going to be a pretty big counterpoint. Listen, we appreciate everything you've done for the company this yeah. far, and yeah. we find you to be a valuable asset to us. Oh. Well, However, dot, oh. dot, dot, all right, this is going to be a long conversation with the wife when we get home. The political climate has changed, and therefore, that's what, get, shove that up your keister. You see what I'm saying? Philip Wise used to randomly Philly. say, I love Philly. He used to randomly go, in this climate? And it made me laugh so hard. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to the um, Whole Foods. In this climate? <laughs> in this climate? I love Philly. I miss Philly. I do, too. He's funny. How, is the health okay? But I, I heard, you know. I should check in with him. I haven't talked to him eh. in a while. I talked to him, God, it's probably been about a month. It's the last time I talked to oh, him. Oh, well, you've talked to him way sooner than I have. But uh, I, got a, I got a friend that's, I think, coming on as, as an advertiser that I haven't seen in a while. I met him with Philly. I won't say his name yet, but I will next week. I think he starts next week. But Philly and I are sitting around the old KQ studios, and we get a call from a listener, this young man who just moved here from Somalia, and he said he wanted to go see a movie with Philip and me called Black Hawk Down. Remember that movie? Uh, yeah, that's an insanely good movie. Uh, it was unbelievably good. And so 20 years later, he calls up and goes, hey, I want to come on the show. As an advertiser. How cool. See, now that's what we would like to focus on in America is when mm -hmm. somebody comes here from Somalia and succeeds greatly because he busts his ass, why don't we ever hear those stories? Right? I mean, that's where, that's the goal in life is to say things like that. That's what How I'm saying. awesome is that? But they never do, do they? Well, we When's the last did. time you turned into CNN or Fox? Yeah, you know what? Things are going great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know the only show I listen Doesn't to? Happen. Which one? The Tom Bernard Morning Show. I don't blame you because we just B BS across the board. But at least we don't lie to you for money. No. And speaking of other good news. Yes, ma'am. You know how we were really concentrating on the... You know what I love about her so much? Uh -huh. I'm right in the middle of telling a story and then mm -hmm. she changes the subject. I mm -hmm. thought you were wanting to talk about this. No, the it's, it's you're, Ripka. you're over. All right, fine. I won't no, wait. Up. Okay, what were you saying? Though? I knew you were going to want to talk about I was teasing you, big baby. I'm not a baby. You're a huge baby. I'm not a I'm not a baby is like the most baby thing okay. to say. Okay, okay. Oh, stand up. Have you seen her outfit? Uh, I cool. haven't yet today. No. It's just a only, running skirt. Only a baby would wear that. It's a running oh. skirt. Oh, it's a three-year-old sitting over there to my right. You're the one wearing matching. Actually, you look cool as I mean, all hell. You know. I, I mean, I, I, I probably myself wouldn't wear horizontal stripes in this climate. But I'm <laughs> Not in this climate. <laughs> Not in this climate, man. In this climate? Yeah, oh, it's, it's all true. Um, so we were concentrating yesterday on raising money for Navia Ripka. She's right. the one who is a yep. three-year-old in um, critical condition. Her father uh, died immediately on the scene when she was the <coughs> wrong way traffic had hit their car in Oakdale. And you're right, it was at 2.30. 2 he had to be morning, somewhere yeah. at 4.30. Yep. Um, he was going to go help somebody on a farm. And, and Correct. So they're raising money, and they are up to 10000 Their goal is still 15000 but they are up to 10000 so that's awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, how much more? Are we going to give them until tomorrow? Yeah, I'm going to end of day tomorrow. Uh, we'll see if they hit their goal. Well, they're going to hit their goal I, one I, way or the other. We're going to, yeah, yeah. We're but, going to make sure they hit the goal of fifteen but, tomorrow. But the more you can kick in, the better. The better. And we've had so many listeners uh donate it's pretty insanely cool and advertisers yes our advertisers have stepped up too which is really cool yeah well we'll get that done by the end of the show tomorrow we'll uh, work it up but yeah if you can just uh, like i said if you can kick in one dollar what the hell man a dollar is a dollar sure. right dollar is a dollar it's a little baby girl it's a little girl right yeah a little girl she's it's <sighs> there's all these pictures of her in the hospital and she's got a stuffy no no don't show those to me. I'm not showing them. I, do I can't even go look those. at them again. Yeah. yeah, it was made me oh. so sad yesterday. She has a stuffy in her arm, yep. a little lovey, little baby. Oh. Never see daddy again. I mean, that's I can't see. That's another thing. Another example. We just talked about how wonderful things are, but look at that. 
you know, yes, the three of us did not get along with our fathers, but at least he wasn't killed in a car accident, so we'd mourn for the rest of our lives, yeah. right? We get to be pissed off instead of mourning. It's a much better position to be in, don't you think? I think so. Poor little girl. But we'll get there. And thank you so much. The listeners to this show are just, you're incredible. You're setting new, I can't tell you what they are, but um, our audience and advertisers and everybody are setting new goals for this show every day. It's, or they're setting new goals on this show every day. It's just, I'm sorry. Why am I in such a good mood for Christ's sake? It's because it's nice out. And Murphy's here. Yeah. Oh, and Murphy's here. That's true. Uh, speaking of the GoFundMe that they have set up, I was scrolling through there the other day, yesterday. Yes, and sir. I saw that somebody had anonymously donated $500. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's amazing. Because if that was, I, I feel like I know so many people in my life that if they donated $500, their names would be in all caps in bold. <laughs> right. Look what I did. That's like, true. yeah, this person was just like, here you go. Here's 500 bucks. No problem. That's you so open, nice. Yeah. You open the card. Da, 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 da. Yeah, you got yeah. to have, have a parade going by when you give 500 bucks. Sure. No, anonymous is a wonderful thing. Yeah. It really yeah. is. It's great. No question. So, um, now, uh, and look, I don't want to get into this because you know what I've decided basically, and I, it's not something I decided, but I just looked at the facts and it's absolutely true because now, of course, somehow America's responsible for the smoke that came from Canada. I don't know how that's possible, but the, uh, some of these politicians now, the smoke that's in uh, on the East Coast and actually all across, why don't we have any here? Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I have friends of mine who live in New York, and one of them posted a picture yesterday, and it said, this is my picture on Wednesday of the skyline, and this is a picture of New York, and this is the picture on Thursday, and it's all orange. And I was right. like, oh, go cry me a river. Every day that somebody lights a campfire up in Saskatchewan, and we got to deal with the smoke for six weeks. Don't, oh, New York's got a little bit of, have you been <laughs> to that city? It's all smog. It's nothing but rats and trash on the side of the highway. You're and, hey. Yeah. And human piss. Yes. Like, when you walk around New York, there's moments where you go, oh, there's pee. And then you go, I hope that's it, definitely a human. Yeah. You go, I hope it's not, but that's that's most likely a human. <sighs> human pee? Yeah. Human pee on concrete. Any turds? All over the city. Any turds? I don't know. I, that's, hope... I heard that's the new deal now. They poop, too. Oh, and, yeah. That's great. And you can't blame humans, either, because... Stores won't let you use their bathroom. Why should they? I, I mean, but I just say, it's a city. Oh, my headphones. You just turned off the monitor. <laughs> what are you doing? About? Ladies and gentlemen, no, our, when the, I die, I'll go to heaven because I've spent my time in hell the, working with a... Bra- what are you doing? The thing just went off. The, did, whole, ed, the whole bar. Oh, did Murph uh, no, knock it off? Over here. No, he's Oh, no, he wasn't. He was right, he was right no, there. No, he was yeah. literally behind me before. No, yeah. Oh, it my was God. you and Murphy together that did it. I cannot with you. You destroyed the show. We may Do as well not just blame go home. the angel of a dog, Murphy. <laughs> the angel and of a dog. And also, there is, is no combination angel. more deadly than an unwell girl and her golden retriever. You mean me- mentally? Mentally unwell, oh, yeah. Oh, I understand that completely. I understand that completely, ladies and gentlemen. But in any case, uh, yeah, so we're going to get that taken care of. But I agree with you that uh, donating money anonymously is a wonderful thing. Look, if you don't want to do it anonymously, that's wonderful, too. You're still giving the money. Um, but it, it's just a great story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. We stepping up to help one another. And Tim Niemeyer called in, stepped up. I just really good people, really, really nice people. And then you meet people in management, and then your day's ruined. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the building yesterday, and I, I – Were you? Yeah. I was. Ha- I had a lovely time. Did you? What did you do? Um, I was looking at some stuff for uh, the Minnetonka Triathlon, oh, and okay. uh, I had to walk around the building because we're doing a step contest. I had a lovely time, but I don't have my job lovely. doesn't suck. Your job sometimes sucks. You just have a lot of meetings. Because well, it's like 12, 12 hours long every day. <laughs> I mean, like that. So like, that's why I get so confused. People in my life that are really successful, I look at and I go, "Do I really want that?" <laughs> Well, it all depends on how you got there. Because most successful people are filthy pigs who stole most of the money. How did you get to success? Uh, I have some intelligence and talent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you want me to say? I don't know. You, you dope. I don't know. I, actually, I do work very hard. I do. I That's know true. you do. I, I that, absolutely That know. I will admit that I do work very hard. And I know it's and uncomfortable. I try not to be a prick. Do you, when you st- Unless it's to you. That's true. Okay. Um, when you started the morning show, did it right away feel like a success? Or did it feel like we should switch things up oh, all the here? time? No, at KQ. Oh, at KQ, 37 years ago, almost 38 years ago. Yeah. Now. 
Um, I thought I'd be there. I, they made me promise. Mark Steinmetz and Dave Hamilton made me promise when I took the job sitting in my apartment in New York that I'd stay for at least six months. So when I took the job, I figured I'd be there about six months and we'd move on and we'd all go different ways. And for some reason, I don't know what the climate was here and all the rest of it. I mean, talking about the radio climate, the show just blew up immediately. And really? I don't know why. Although all the people, there was a guy, and you guys might be too young to remember this. Matter of fact, you are too young to remember this. But we had a TV commercial that ran where a guy was break dancing. Yeah, we just watched it the other day. Oh, did you? Yeah. 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 Guy weighed about 400 pounds. Yeah. Right? People thought that was me. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Thanks a, a lot. That's there. not a great mm. play. That's not, that's, you know, I don't weigh four bills, but you know what I'm saying. Um, it all works out in the end. So at that time, success to you felt like it, it just kind of fell together really quickly, right? It, that show did come together really, really quickly, yes. Well, look, I inherited Dan Culhane and um, Mark Rosen, Lee Volsvik. I mean, that's a pretty hot, that's a pretty solid lineup to just inherit. Yeah. So, I mean, there already was a ton of talent there. I mean, not Mark Rosen, but everybody else. <laughs> not yeah. Rosie. I just saw Rosie over the weekend. Yeah, Rosie's getting doing? married. Oh, my goodness. Getting married in September. How exciting. Know, two women. First, one woman marries him. Unfortunately, it doesn't end well. And then he, well, how can two women like him? I have no idea. Well, well, well the first one didn't. <laughs> yeah, there you first go. The first one ended up not liking him, so... Rosie is a good man. Um, and I, you know, I agree with Brittany because she said, isn't Mark Rosen the tallest Jew in America? Oh my God. I said, yes, he's 6'6". Six, six. Yeah. That sounds like something I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Not a whole lot. Is that what you're saying? I really want to pet Murphy right now. But in any case, to get back to what you were saying, you had Dave Hamilton and I had known each other for years and years and years. Um, I met him. I took him to a Minnesota Twins game. That's how I met him because he called in one day. I can't remember his radio name, though. He had a radio name. Dave Hamlet. It was I Dave. I should ask him. Dave Cooper. That's what it was. Dave Cooper. Dave Cooper. <laughs> what is wrong with ha Dave Hamilton? Hamilton is yeah. such an official, beautiful uh, yeah. name. No, like, Hi, I'm Dave what? Cooper, which yeah. is fine. Well, Cooper's a great name, it's too, but fine. Hamilton. But Hamilton is a very, it sounds so almost presidential. Yeah. There was a uh, guy up in uh, Duluth who was on the radio. His name was Bill Jones. And somebody asked him one day, they're like, is that your real name? Is that your radio name? And he went, yeah. Because I chose Bill Jones for my radio <laughs> name. I'll never forget that break. <laughs> that's, that is very, very true. Although I did get a couple of calls at the very beginning. So are you from Brainerd? I said, what? Oh, my God. Tom Brainerd. Yes, that's who I am. Mm -hmm. There's not no bad doubt either. about it. Um, Brainerd. Did you have an idea of what you wanted the show to be, or did it just kind of organically become that? I was going to go on the show and do what I do and tell the truth. And that's, I think... If somebody came on the national news right now and told you only the truth, I bet you that station would have a 100 share within about a month. Or they'd be fired immediately. Yeah. They're going to have to start telling the truth because both of these sides, the far left and the far right, they have created, well, along with the politicians now, they're, they're right in there too, uh, they've created two cults in America. We have the people in the center and on our left and on our right are, are cult members. Yeah. That's what this has turned into. Or I hate you. Well, wait a minute. If you're so, okay, uh, on the right side, if you're so, uh, what is it, kind of conservative, I guess. Mm -hmm. If you're conservative, why would you try to ruin somebody's life? That's not a very conservative thing to do. And if on the other side, you're very progressive, why do you ruin people's lives? That's not very progressive, now is it? It's very cultish, what you're doing. I thought of you yesterday about Oh, this. no, this can't be good. <laughs> it wasn't good. I, I knew it. <laughs> I was at a store in uh, Chaska. If they sell little kiddos clothes, I'm a little nervous to say the name because I don't know if they want more heat. You got the Schwanz T-shirt? No, God no. <laughs> oh, I thought that was what, that's where I thought she was that's going. I thought you were gonna go with. Oh too, yeah, yeah, really? Yeah. Um, what you were doing yesterday? No, I um, I thought of you because it was just so wild. So it's wild, man. Chaska, there's this little there's this little kiddo store. Um, and I was buying Gogo -Go some clothes and a book. And uh, she said, hey, we have readings going on. These, like, where people volunteer their time and read these books. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, oh, I'd love to go to this. And she's like, well, there's, you know, one, this and this. And she's like, 
we're under a lot of heat right now because one of these readers is transgender and people are freaking out about it and coming in her store and yelling oh, in her face. the book is about transgender? No, the, it's not, the book isn't about transgender. The person oh, trans- volunteering reading Who is, gives a rat's ass? Right? Who cares? So people are coming in her store and yelling at her employees. Once Pe- again, that's a cult move right I there. know. That's what that is. I know. And it's, and it's like, on both sides of the aisle. Absolutely. That's, why I'm, that's oh. why I'm not a Democrat nor a Republican. I can't take it anymore. I just kept thinking, what would get me so... What You don't want to know what I would do if so they were uh, somebody was reading something that I didn't want my kid or if somebody... I'd leave. I wouldn't attend the event. Exactly. And that's what I would do. I would like to say again... What was it, 15 years ago, we had the first transgender traffic reporter on the KQ Morning Show, and nobody gave a rat's ass. Nobody That's, cared. I mentioned that. Good or bad, by the way. Because she asked what I did, and I, we got into that, and I was telling her about that, and I was, um, I'll just say, it's little, the place is called Little Ruse in Chaska, and so I just, I felt like it's this tiny little store. She runs mm-hmm. it. She makes the clothes for it. It's just this little thing, and we were talking about you, and I told her that story and how, why, why would anybody care about if you don't want your kid to be around a certain person who's reading, right. don't attend. Then but don't come. They're attacking her Facebook. They're going into her store and yelling in her face. <laughs> of course they are. Right? That's Everybody's what I said. a tough guy now, too. That's the other part. And she's got, like, you know, uh. high school employees sitting there getting yelled at over this. And it's, and again, this is a volunteer just reading a book. I know, but once again, you could put it in the same category. Some people take religion, and if you're religious, I got no problem against being religious. But if you turn it once again into a cult thing, I got a huge problem with that. Yeah, you know, you your what you believe cannot dominate the earth. We have different viewpoints. Calm down. Yeah. I, but again, I well, and Rudy, you're in the same situation in the voiceover business. If you don't like gay people, you better not get in the voiceover business, mm-hmm. I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because every damn agent you got in the country is probably going to be... I don't know why that is. So many gay men become agents, but they do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they just do. And, and if, if you can't deal with that, then you should not get into that business. I don't... Why... So this, this person... Uh, this transgender person was reading a book and they got pissed off about that. Yeah, it's it's I, this sometime in June. This person's coming in and reading, um, and uh, a bunch of people keep coming in her store and yelling at her employees and writing on her Facebook these. Well, things. how do they know the person's transgender? I don't even know. I think they're from that area. Like they went to that high school, and I, think, I wouldn't even know. I mean, the thing is, it's sometimes these cities feel a little like small. Like they they they're tight knit so I think that yeah. they just know like, sure. this yeah, person's I mean, yeah. from this environment yeah. <clears throat> I understand that it's like a Karen Facebook group exactly Karen mm-hmm. god damn it but yeah it was just one of those things I was I was like it just it bummed me out I ended up calling Julia and talking about it and I was just, Julia I was like that just bums me out one thing I would do is don't let it bum you out they're gonna do what they're gonna do and that and that's just how it is all the only thing you and I can do is show support yeah. And say, would you just all calm down? If you don't like it, then don't go in the store. Yeah. Exactly. You know, that's it. It's, I, I, well, there's a, a show on streaming right now, and I can't remember the name of the show, but there's a picture of this young person. And I believe the, the descriptor has something to do with being transgender or something like that. Mm-hmm. Looking at the picture, I could not tell you whether that's a boy or a girl. Yeah. So why would I care? I have no idea. I don't care. You know, it's not for me, but what I the way I live is not for you. See, that's the one thing. Okay, no, no, let me ask you this question. Okay. Is the real problem here because that person becoming something that you're not is rejecting who you are? Is that how they see this? I hope that they realize that exactly what you said is how yeah. everybody perceives mm-hmm. it. Yeah. If you're freaking yep. out because somebody is so uncomfortable in their own body that they feel they have to represent themselves differently – and, and that makes you uncomfortable, you're projecting. You're projecting something that you. makes you so uncomfortable because something's going... What's, that's how I see it. When people freak out about, you know, gays or transgender, I mean, how many times does we find out that all these people that made such a huge issue about gays, they're, like, closeted as well? I yeah. mean, that's what... I, I hope they know that that's how right. it reads. Mm-hmm. You have to find a humorous take on all of it. And that would every, be nice. Every time, like, the transgender topic comes up, I always think about Kevin Nealon. 
You guys remember Kevin Neal? I love Kevin Neal. Saturday Night Live, great, great comedian. He's got a show on YouTube called Hiking with Kevin, where yeah. he just takes celebrities and they go for a walk in, around Los Angeles and they go hiking up in the hills. And he had Caitlyn Jenner on. And they start their hike. Oh, yeah. And the first thing that he asked Caitlyn Jenner was, all right, Caitlyn, first question. If you could change one thing about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that is you know, so that's great. funny. That's brilliant. So good. Yeah, that's very, very. He was on the morning show one time years ago. He said, you know, I've never been to Minneapolis before. It's the first time I've ever been to Minneapolis and St. Paul. And uh, it's kind of interesting because I got on the airplane in New York, and you got this thing called the Mall of America. So that's how long ago this mm -hmm. was. So you just opened the Mall of America? Because I got on the airplane, and I thought we were going to Japan. <laughs> he said he was literally the only Caucasian on the airplane. Oh, yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's great. They're all coming to the Mall of America, mm -hmm. baby. Good for them. Now, I, I, once again, you live your life as long as you're... Here's the way I look at life. Let me see if you guys agree with this, because I know we got to go to a break here. I'm sorry about that. I'm going a little long. But, see, I will live my life, and you live your life. I have two things that are very important to me. Um, and see if you guys agree with this or not. I have about a three-foot circle around me, and my family has about a hundred-foot circle around them. Just don't come inside that circle, and we're going to get along really well, right? Do not shove your crap down my throat. Don't scream at me. Don't yell at me. Don't do any of those things to me, because now you're getting inside my circle, and I ain't going to put up with it. So just calm down. We can talk if you want, but uh, that's as far as it's going to go. Do not come inside my personal space and start calling me names and being judgmental because I ain't going to put up with it. That's fair, isn't it? Sure. Yeah. Calm down, everybody. Calm down. See, all we ever do on this show is give, 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 mm -hmm. like this great information you're about to hear, and we'll be right back. This is the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Listen live on the Tom Bernard Show app or at TomBernardShow.com. When you need someone to listen, a lawyer you know and trust. If you've never been in an auto accident, it's hard to know what to expect from the insurance adjuster. Here are some tips. One, if they talk to you about whether or not you should hire a lawyer, it's a good sign that you probably should. Two, it's illegal for them to give you any legal advice. They aren't lawyers, and they aren't licensed to practice law. Three, if they tell you that everyone involved in the accident is at fault, they're wrong. This comes from the belief that you're at fault for just being on the road. That's nonsense and not supported by any law. Finally, remember that friendly adjusters are often just gaining information. They want you to do most of the talking so they can file their report. I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. I hope you're never injured in a collision. But if you are, don't sign anything until you've talked to us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. Why should your business bank with North American Banking Company? Here's Corey Wisco of the Wellshire. We're so grateful for uh, their support and, and just the fact that they truly believe in what we do. They, they took the time to get to know us. Uh, they have faith in what we do, and it's just been a great partnership that's just uh, always been based on success. They've always had our back every step of the way. For more information about North American Banking Company, go to nabanco.com. That's nabanco.com, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great to be here. I was just talking to Brittany off the uh, air. It's, we're not on the air, though. What can you call it? We're on, on, off the stream. Off the, what is it? Yeah, you could say stream. Although somebody did point it out that most people are listening to this through their phone, up through the Bluetooth, onto their speakers in their car, which then is pumped out into the air. Yeah, it's true. You would so. be on, so we can still be on the air. I guess, yeah. yeah no, you're mm -hmm. right. You're mm -hmm. absolutely right. So in any case, what the hell was I thinking about now? I was just going to tell you something and move on with life. But I can't remember what it was. It'll pop into my head again. Uh, delis. You guys yeah. like delis? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's an article in the Star Tribune this morning. I've not read it yet. I just read the headline. Our critic picks his four favorite delis in the Twin Cities. I didn't know there were four delis anymore. There used to be, but I know two and I love them both. Yeah, know? well, I know that you have one on your list that's not on that list. I put, I put this really? one in the Tom's news story, so I have to kind of excuse myself. I know which ones are on there. Oh, you did? Okay. And I know the, there's one you're thinking of, and it's not on this list. <laughs> Does it start with a... Crossroads? No. What? Is oh. it a backward C? Yeah. See, if you see a C, I wouldn't see a C. I'd see a backward yeah. C. I don't know if you know that or not. Okay, well. 
Okay, much much worse. I'll tell you this. If Subway doesn't make that list, I'm going to be rich See? and pissed. So. <laughs> Got it, <laughs> fresh. Okay, so you know what's on the list. Yep. I do not. But the only two delis I can think of are Crossroads out there on, uh, on Hopkins Crossroads and Cecil's in St. Paul. And I love Cecil's in St. Paul. Mm-hmm. I know. Don't you tell me that's not on the list. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm never reading your newspaper again if Cecil's is not on your list. I, I, nope, I'm out. This is going to be awkward. I'm going home right that's what now. The first 7.28. Thing, it's the first thing I said, and I put it on the Tom's news stories, and I was like, he's going to be pissed that Cecil's. I love Cecil's. Here. I love Cecil's. I, one of the reasons I love Cecil so much is many, many years ago, you know, because I worked at Hubbard back in the day, so I was right on the border of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Literally half the building is in Minneapolis, half's in St. Paul. Yes, sir. So I used to go to Cecil's all the time. And I go in there one time, and there's this old Jewish man in there, and he's going, young man, what are you ordering? And I said, I always come in for the matzo ball soup. Oh, I love matzo ball soup. I, what else do you like? I said, ah, you know, they got a nice roast beef sandwich. And he said, and I quote, fe goyish anachas. You know what that means? No. Gentile pleasures. <laughs> How great is that? That's so funny. That's so... But I was lucky because I grew up in North Minneapolis. I know how to speak a bit of Yiddish. Not tons, but a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sreira is my favorite Yiddish word. Let's see if anybody knows what Sreira means. I can't even say that. I, most people can't, can't say Slower. that. And I wonder why it is in, in the Yiddish language, the Jewish language, that they did that cha deal. Challah. The bread is challah, not challah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but you, hmm. you can say challah bread and no one's going to get mad at you. I said challah. I will not go in. And then the spit in, comes out from my I throat. Was, <laughs> throw it to a bakery near the glass and say challah. Right, because we ain't no challah bread girl. We ain't no challah bread girl. Okay. This We're going to go to the... What? We're we singing the song. Did you just say I don't talk shit? No. Yeah. Oh, what did you say? I said that's my shit. Well, that's my. Oh, mm-hmm. I don't. I talk shit. Uh, that's my. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good job listening to that stuff. Just as long as you don't do it around me. Yeah. She was pointing at a bucket in the studio, by the way. Yeah. She exactly. meant literally. Yes. Literally. <laughs> me and verse. No. It. It. Rap took the place of R and B, and I will never forgive music for doing that. Let's get you more angry, and you read this list. Never. Okay. Well, interrupt me again. <laughs> I, I, want read, I want you to okay, read. I want Okay, I'll this. read the list. Right, I am going to be pissed off. I know. I don't know because I haven't seen the list yet. But here we go. Our critics pick. Our critic picks his four favorite delis in the Twin Cities. Okay, where's it? Um, oh, so John Chang is the critic. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Okay, I believe so. John, it could be your ass by the time I read this. I want you to know. I might be coming down to the Star Tribune building. They are all very different from one another and all redefine what modern delis can be. Oh, so now it's got to be a modern deli. I see. So it's not really a deli. It's a modern deli. Mm -hmm. Okay. I I understand. So it's going to be everything except for food that Jews eat. Is that basically what this is going to be? I don't know. I don't think that's true. Uh, Kramarchik's. I do like Kramarchik's. Yeah. Same. No question about the Reuben at Kramarchik's is the best in the Twin Cities. I do love Kramar. Do they still have that old guy that parks the car or shows you where to park at Kramarchik's? It's been a few years since I've been, so okay. I don't know. Not last time I was there. They didn't. He was the best. You would pull up in your car and he'd go, what do you want? <laughs> like, oh, I well, love I wanna that. Go, I'm going to go in and grab a sandwich. Well, park right there. You know who took you me? crabby bastard. I loved him. To uh, Kramarchik's the first time. Who? Jerry from KQ. Really? Yeah, I from love promotions. Jerry. I love oh, Jerry. Yeah, Jerry. I remember Jerry. I haven't thought about him in a long time, but Great he seems guy. like a guy who would definitely plow through a, a giant Polish. Oh, he rolling could. with Jerry yeah. was the best because he knew everybody. He did. And he'd always call, he'd say, little buddy. That's what he'd always call me. Come on, little buddy, let's go. And I'd get in the vehicle with him. Great guy. We'd have about five different stops because he had wheelings and dealings he had to do. And we'd pick up some food. We'd eat in the car and we'd go to the promotion. Nope. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, great guy. Jerry's a great guy. Love no Jerry. Doubt. Okay, so we start with the Ruben and Kramar chicks. We, we all three agree on that one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So here we go. Then we move on to the pool and yacht sandwich at Marty's Deli. Now, that is based on a sandwich that was originally made at the Pool and Yacht Club on Lilydale over in St. Paul. That's where the sandwich started. Okay. What, what is it? What is the Pool and Yacht Club? No, I mean the sandwich. I can't it tell is, what it is. It says spend a little more time at Marty's Deli. And you may notice. No, I don't know where Marty's Deli is. Where's Marty's Deli? Don't know. I don't know that one. Do you know Look that one? Look it up. <clears throat> no, 
I was look. I was looking as well. No, now t today or now, it's now or never. Um, Same I don't know where it is either. Yeah, I don't know where Marty's is, but it, I tell you what, if they got the uh, pool and yacht club uh, sandwich, I'd go over there and eat. It's uh, 400 Northeast Lowry Avenue, so it must be an uptown, huh? Is that right? Lowry's in Ooh. North Minneapolis. So, yeah, so actually, uh, this is in Northeast. I'm sorry. It's yeah. by Stanley's. Oh, right. There you oh, go. Oh, it's yeah. by Stanley's. It's kind okay. of by Grumpy's, just north of Grumpy's. Love yep. it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love it. Works for me. So i got to get over there and try the pool and yacht sandwich. Uh, basically, it says uh, the soothing mosaic by the door, the nautical blue accents, the fancier take on checkerboard patterned wrappers. All the provisions are good. The pool and yacht leavens good chicken, a wild acres breed with capers, pickled fennel, arugula. Boy, you're getting a little over the top on me now. I, this sounds good to me. Red onion. Yes. Yeah, it's not for me. Too Peppercini. Much. See, all that onion and garlic. Uh, yeah. It's too much for me. I would just, I love arugula. Arugula. Why? Because it has no flavor? I, it's got like a peppery flavor. Does it really? Yeah, I love arugula. Okay, so we got Marty's Deli and we got Kramarchik so far. We go down to number three, Emily's Lebanese. Uh, that's over northeast too. Uh, right, right on University Avenue, and about what the hell would that be? About Fifteenth and Fifth, some uh, uh, Six Forty One University Avenue. That's where it is. Six Forty One. Yeah. Uh, the decor, I'm told, has not changed much in Emily's fifty-year history, but uh, endearing things. The old-school cash register and display case, flanked with large glass jars of sweets, among others, donated especially with prices in check. Every time I used to go into Lebanese Emily's Lebanese Deli, she'd go, "You still on KQ?" <laughs> It was phenomenal. You still doing that hobby? You still doing that hobby thing on the radio? I love Emily. Emily's Lebanese Deli is phenomenal. This, this is good. This is good stuff. And they, the, the way they mix the food where you get these little plates, like, it makes you realize, like, they definitely know food combinations Yeah, well. I agree. Yep, you're right. So, so far, so good. I don't know one. Marty's I've never eaten there. The other two I have. I got to get over to Marty's. Uh, is it Misant or Misant? Does anybody ever heard of this one? Uh, mm -hmm. No, I haven't. This one's in Brooklyn Park. Oh, it is? Okay. My son may look a little bit too primed for a franchise. There are two locations, one next to Applebee's, but uh, proves it can be done appealingly. It looks like Bell's House from Beauty and the Beast. Well, that's pretty impressive if mm. it looks like that. So where is it? It's at, uh, oh, it's at 85th and Edinburgh. Yeah, and in there's Brooklyn one in, Park. yeah, there's one in Roseville as well. And in Roseville, okay. Uh, so we'll head there. Kramarchik Sausage Company. We're back at Kramarchik's. Yeah, I think they just threw, threw a picture at the beginning. So wait a oh. second. They didn't include Cecil's nor Crossroads. Correct. Are you mentally ill? They do mention Cecil's. I don't know But if they, not Crossroads. Let me see if they mention Crossroads. Crossroads is phenomenal. They don't mention Crossroads. Oh, Jesus. You know what? Get your head out of your ass. They Where, have, oh, sorry. Where's Crossroads at? Uh, on Hopkins Crossroads and Cedar Avenue. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, it's um, really good. They mention Cecil's in one sentence in the last article. Uh, they say, um, if we're doing an apples to apples comparison, the one at Cecil's is more virtuous when it was talking about um, a sandwich. They only mentioned Cecil's that one time. That's which weird. Is insane to me. I agree. I have Cecil's uh, to me is the standard. I love a, Cecil's. Of a deli. I agree. Feh, Goyesh What could be better? <laughs> <laughs> you go in there. Look, Plitman's Deli when I was a kid on Plymouth Avenue. I still know Michael Plitman. He's a dear friend. But I've been eating at delis because of my neighborhood since I was a little boy. Yeah. I know deli food, damn it. That's all I'm telling you. First time I ever went to Cecil's, I know this is going to be shocking. Gelfand took me. Oh, what? <laughs> Who ever heard of it? I was like... A day over 21, maybe, and he was like, well, I got to take you to a good place. And so we went to Cecil's, and to this day, when I'm in that area, if I'm at all hungry, I pop in and grab something. I still miss the Lincoln Dell, though, man. I bet. I, all I know is stories about Lincoln Dell uh, for you, and I just... I love the Lincoln Dell. Well, again, I mean, the lunch I had was Sid Hartman, and who the hell's the lead singer again in, uh, God, what the hell's the name of the band now? I can see his face. He's the one who fell G off. Gene Simmons. From Gene Kansas. Simmons, yes. that's exactly who it was. Who broke John Lastman's desk over at the queue. R.I.P. that desk. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, out of all people, too, Lastman, who I'm is like, like yeah. always just, yeah. oh, oh, God, do I have to pay for this? Oh, God, so worried all the time. But yeah, great memories over there getting together with Passel. Well, I told you the story. Passel and I are sitting there one time, and we look out the window. This is when Highway 12, I've told you the story before, I know, but Highway 12. 
that was not 394, so there was a median, a grass median between the, the west and eastbound lanes. One cop pulls over from the east, one cop pulls over from the west, hands the other cop a box of donuts and drives away. I just love that. That's so good. <laughs> Here are your donuts, officer. Right. <laughs> I don't, you know who should be arrested is Kristen Burt. Uh, hands down. I knew it. Of course. What's happening, sister? I just, a little bit of breaking news. <laughs> Pat Robertson passed away. Oh, really? Yeah. I, you know, he was just, uh, just came across. So uh, he was 93. Um, probably a lot of people remember him from the 700 Club. Right, mm -hmm. right. Of course, and CBN, Christian Broadcast Network. Um I'm glad you said that because of what the hell is CBN? I didn't yeah. even know what that was. <laughs> yeah, CBN, Whoops. back in the day. Uh, but he was the one, yeah, he took a tiny station and turned it into a global. He did. I mean, I remember the yep. 700 Club. They're always asking for money. Oh, they were yeah. always after your money. Didn't he also say AIDS is God's way of killing gay people? That's like, correct. wasn't that him? What a huge, nut job. No, 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 no. That was Brittany. LGBT. <laughs> Brittany said that. Oh, double finger. She gave you the double finger. Yeah. Well, only time yeah. will tell. That's an absolute joke. I'm yeah. so sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Also, Kristen, I can tell you're reeling over the death of the Iron Sheik yesterday. Sure. Yeah. My brother probably is. My brother was a huge, not, it wasn't WWE at the time, it was WWF. Yeah, absolutely. World Wildlife huge. Federation. Good. Yeah, mm -hmm. wrestling. Yeah. Hulkamania he, killed him. Hulkamania? Hulk, it was, that's what took him down. I never will, saw it coming. I will tell you, honest to God, back in the days when I was in my 20s, We'd get together with Roy and the dog. Oh, God, you'd have loved the dog. He was called the dog because he walked like a bulldog. He walked like this. <laughs> he walked just like a bulldog because he had a very big chest. But every Saturday, it was Saturday night at the St. Paul Auditorium. But every Saturday night, we'd sit at the dog's house or my house or Roy's house or whomever, and we'd watch all-star wrestling and drink like a fish. So by the time we left, we had a good uh, buzz going. It was phenomenal. And, of course, being in our early 20s, we're all jacked up, ready to put somebody in a headlock. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I used to love watching wrestling. Loved it. Do you ever go to, like, the local shows? Do you ever run down to, like, the VFWs or the Legions or something just to, like, watch the local guys? I love that stuff. Do you ever watch it first half, first yeah. wrestling? Yeah, yeah. It's, oh. it's a blast. <laughs> Yeah. Meow, 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 yeah. meow. There's a cat man. His name's not cat man. His Better name not is... be. Yeah. God, what is it? Uh, I forget his name, but everybody, when he gets on the top post and he's about to jump, you go, just eh, all the hands in the oh, air going, God. meow, yeah. meow. And then sometimes <laughs> his enemies will bring a laser pointer, so he's about to do some extreme move, and they'll turn on this laser pointer, and he all of a sudden gets distracted and has to follow the laser <laughs> oh, pointer. Yeah, kind of like a kitty. Yes. Oh, love it's it. Yeah. Amazing. I, love it. I, would, love it. I yeah. forget his name, but he's so good. You would love it, because they have a Wrestlepalooza at First Ave every year. Oh, they and do? Okay. one of the years we went, one of my favorite bands of all time, who were God Rest Their Souls, uh, Metallica. Would play. Oh, that's there amazing. Metallica was a Metallica tribute act where five me or four, there was five guys. There was four members who played the songs of Metallica, but the lead singer dressed like the comedian Gallagher, and they would smash fruit while they played Metallica songs. Okay. And it was one of the wildest shows you'll ever see, and it was so much fun. How did they ever make that connection? I don't get the connection. In fact, the comedian Gallagher, this is no joke, at Station 4 in St. Paul, the comedian Gallagher opened for the band Metallica oh, God. one night. That's phenomenal. That's, That's great. That's amazing. Yes. Mm -hmm. hilarious. Mm -hmm. So very quickly before we move on from wrestling, when I first uh, started dating Catherine many years ago, she was at the University of Minnesota in journalism school, Okay. So she was uh, assigned the job of going to all-star wrestling over at the St. Paul Auditorium. She had to write a story about it, right, for her class. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw her that night after she had gone. We got together, and she said, I, I don't understand any of this. I didn't know anything <laughs> about this. She said, I was sitting in the stands, and I'm observing, and that, you know, it's all... Uh, you know, very loud and very fancy and sparkly and, oh, my God, getting everybody all excited. And I said, well, what went wrong? She said, <clears throat> there was a couple in front of me. They looked to be probably about mm, 40, 45, but then again, they could only have been 20 and lived a hard life, you know. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But the, the man and the woman are sitting there, 
And this guy comes into the ring, this big, giant, you know, muscular man comes in the ring. And the first thing he does is smacks the other guy right in the face. And by the way, I've had all-star wrestlers do that to me. Well, Animal and Hawk. They hit me, and it sounded like they hit me so hard, there was this big smack. He didn't even hit me. Sure. I mean, it's amazing mm -hmm. what those guys could do. He never even hit me, and he made the sound with his other hand on his leg. It was, like, it was like, it was like, man. But his hand was literally right there, but I barely could feel it. Really? That was an amazing deal. So anyway, there's a lot of slapping going on. Mm -hmm. So this wrestler gets in, marches right over to the other guy's corner, slaps him right across the face, and the woman sitting in front of Catherine turns to her boyfriend slash husband and says, that kind of reminds me of the first time you hit me. <laughs> oh, my God. God. Oh, oh my God. She says, I almost ran oh, out of there. Bye. I'm she was so happy sorry. about it. It's like, what? That is not funny, actually. No. no it's just horrifying. It's so bad that I get why you're giggling because it's, well, it's so just bad. It's too much to take. It's too much to take. <laughs> like, it's like the what? time I couldn't stop laughing that Rudy was telling me about your oh. that fight that your family was in oh, and yeah. he kept yelling what was the thing my my uncle and my aunt got in a fist fight in the front yard of the cabin and uh, he kept saying see you wouldn't want to be you as, <laughs> as, as, they, as they were punching each other <laughs> see you wouldn't want to be you there's well, only you. so much your brain can take <laughs> oh. until you go that's the insanity hearing that that woman said it's oh. like the first time you hit me i mean well, my brain would break first so casual like so casual it's almost reminiscent of uh, in a positive way, like it's like the flowers you got me on our first yeah. date. Yeah. And by the way, she said it in full voice. She didn't whisper it to him. She said that like in full. That reminds me of the first time you hit me. It's like <laughs> Jesus, really? We live in a different world than that, don't we? Mm -hmm. Although I think the first time I ever meet Kristen, I'm going to push her down. What do you think? You're never going to meet me. <laughs> it's never going to happen. You're never coming. I'm never coming near you, Tom. So forget it. That's it. Why don't we do this? We'll take a break here and then come back and we can be on as long as you want. If we take a break here and then you come on, you can be on as long as you want. I love that. Or as little as you want. <laughs> what? Or, or I'm out of here, right? No, I didn't say that. Reminds me the first no, time you kicked me off the show. Here. <laughs> All right, good. We'll be right back. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, Mike Lindell and My Pillow are launching the My Pillow 2.0. When Mike invented My Pillow, it had everything you could ever want in a pillow. Now, nearly 20 years later, he discovered a new technology makes My Pillow even better. The My Pillow 2.0 has the patented adjustable fill of the original My Pillow, and now with a brand new fabric that is made with a temperature regulating thread, the My Pillow 2.0 is the softest, smoothest, and coolest pillow you will ever own. Say goodbye to tossing and turning and flipping your pillow over in the middle of the night, which I hate, by the way. And more great news on the MyPillow 2.0. Buy one, get one free offer with promo code TOM. MyPillow 2.0 with its temperature-regulating technology is 100% made in the USA and comes with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee. Just go to MyPillow.com, click on the radio podcast square to receive the MyPillow 2.0. Buy one, get one free offer. Just when you thought MyPillow couldn't get any better, my Pillow 2.0 gives you the best pillow ever. Enter promo code TOM or call 800 516 5146 to get your My Pillow 2.0s now. This is Bob Sansevier, and I want to tell you about Dave Bialki from Bialki Law. Dave represented my wife, Mary, when she had a significant workplace injury. She was very happy with the job Dave did. If you have a work-related injury and have Dave represent you, I'm betting you'll be happy too. Dave is a down-to-earth guy. He grew up in northern Minnesota, rides a Harley, and worked various jobs doing concrete, electrical, plumbing, roofing, and carpentry work. Dave works for people with work-related injuries. If you work construction, or anywhere for that matter, and you're hurt or even just hurting, you should talk to Dave. Let's face it, our bodies wear out. If your body is worn out from work, if your knees or back or shoulders hurt from things you do at work, do what Mary did. Call Dave and talk to him about it at Bialki Law to set up a free initial conversation consultation the number to call is 763-571-2410 that's 763-571-2410 or visit bialkilaw.com that's b-i-a-l-k-e-law.com 
Com. Ready, set, summer. Hi, Judd Zolgad here. You know, the unofficial start of summer, well, it's here. Whether you're heading to the beach, the ballpark, or a barbecue, summer is more fun when you are feeling your best. Let Livia Weight Control Centers help you make the most of our beautiful summer days. Join Livia's doctor-recommended program today and get eight weeks free. That's right, eight weeks for free. You could lose up to 15 pounds or more by the 4th of July. I lost 40 pounds on this program a couple of years back, and I'm going to tell you the most important thing. The dietitians and nutritionists at Livia are going to help help you maintain weight loss. We've all lost weight, right? Inevitably, it feels like it comes back, not with this program. It has done right by me, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to do right by you. Summertime is here, and Livia wants you to make the most of it. Call 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A or visit Livia, L-I-V-E-A.com. Join today and get eight weeks for free. Again, 15 pounds or more lost by the 4th of July. Are you kidding me? Call 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A. Livia voted Minnesota's best weight loss program two years in a row. Check them out to lose the weight. Cannot believe we burned through the first hour and I didn't once want to choke Brittany. You, that's not true. That is true. You're absolutely right. I did want to choke. You did want to choke. You held back, and that's <laughs> a real back. man. <laughs> you know, Tom, that reminds me of the first time you choked me. I do remember that now. It's like, Jesus, I still can't. Why would you say that in full voice? It's, it makes me very Maybe it was a cry for help. Do you think it's just a cultural thing? Because that's what I was told when I was a little boy. I said, why? Because my mother and father didn't, like, smoke one another and hit one another and all that. I was only, he was only around a few years of my life, and all right, I understand. But my, my mother and father didn't get physically violent with anybody. So is that a learned behavior? Do you learn to be violent with your fist from watching mom and dad? How, how do you learn that? I think a lot of it is a, is a result of your environment, most yeah. likely. Yeah. I just don't understand why the hell you want. You're seven. I think I'll slap you right across the head. Oh, okay. That's great. Mm -hmm. But in any case, let's cheer up because I'm looking at Chris and she's about to cry because it reminds me the first time that Kristen punched me in the stomach. (laughs) Which is amazing that I was able to do it from California all the way to Minnesota with my big stretch arm. Yeah, you got those long (laughs) arms. There's no question about it. So what's the latest, lady? Well, we had a lot of listener emails, and Britt passed them along to me. Oh, really? Yes. We've had didn't requests me on talking about certain entertainment topics. Do you want me to give keep you in the know with every little thing I do? No, I'll catch up. I, that's what I thought. Mm. <laughs> if I sit around waiting for you, I'd be like, oh, God, is it ever going to happen? Uh, you know, I'm going to CC you on every email I send from now on. Oh, no, you're not. You're out of the mix, sister. Forget it. Oh my! He would have to get an uh, Instagram account because you sent him via DM. That's oh, good. True. So I don't have to worry about this ever. Yes. Um, <laughs> so what? Did, what? What are, you, what are you talking about? How many emails did you get? Um, I think just two yesterday. Yeah, two that were direct. I get a lot of emails direct, about Kristen yeah. all the time, but two that were direct questions. You know that, yeah. by the way, your segments are some of the most downloaded segments on this show. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, they, I wanted to tell. See, I am unusual in the fact that I'm in the what, blah, blah, blah entertainment business. And I actually like to tell people when they are appreciated, like, you know, whether it's Brittany and Rudy or you or whomever, I like to pass along to you, you know, people really like you. Why don't people do that more often? I never hear people doing that. Why is that? I, I don't know. I think it's we. I think people get jealous. I think people but, sometimes don't want to share in the success there's, I mean, we see plenty of that in Hollywood. Yeah, it's, people love you. It's a lot of ego. Like if a friend of yeah, mine were yeah. to be, I don't know, showcased in a Tom Petty documentary and then not tell any of us on the show about it, then maybe I'd be a little upset too. Kristen okay. Burt. Maybe. Really? A Tom <laughs> Petty video? Really? Well, there's a story to this, actually, because I know question. where they got this information. It's off of my IMDb page, oh, okay. which you can go and check out. And if you look, there's a 1989 entry that says, I starred in Tom starred. Petty's. Wait, starred in Tom Petty's Free Fallen video. You would have been about four. Well, I'm here to tell you that that news is fake. <gasps> fake oh my news? God. Oh, Lordy. But I want to let everyone know <laughs> that I did star in a Tom Petty documentary called. Free falling, yeah, which ah. happened in um, somewhere around. It was probably produced around t- 2019 or so, but it's been incorrectly <laughs> um, introduced to my IMDb page. So it looks like as a kid, I was starring in 
Tom Petty's Free Fallen video, but if you look at his music video, you will not see me there. Um, but if you do go to Amazon Prime and watch Tom Petty Free Falling, the documentary, you will see my face. You know, I don't want to know this, but I never even thought of this before. Because I've been working with you for 11 years. I have no idea how old you are. And I couldn't guess how old you are either. I have That's no good. clue how old you are. I mean, you could be anywhere from like 16 to... 17. That's a good, good answer, my friend. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you thought you. I was going to go like 80, 85. <laughs> yeah. I'm a thousand years old. I'm a vampire, a so it's all old. good. <laughs> it's all true. So, um, oh, I just wanted to mention quickly, we watched the fourth or eight episodes of The Small Light. A Small Light, it's called. Mm -hmm. That show is phenomenal. God, that woman who plays Meep in it is just amazingly good. Yeah, it's it's going to get probably a lot of um, Emmys buzz. We'll have yeah. nominations coming up in July, so I'm sure that will be a big part of the conversation. I hope so, because they do a really, really nice job. I mean, it's such a sad thing to do a show on, and yet the show can be entertaining, can be interesting. There are very dramatic moments to it. It's really, really well done. Who made that the, the document or the series? Um, I don't even you, know. The director or the... Well, whose idea was it? Because it follows this young woman named Meep who's helping out the Frank family, Anne Frank's family. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to, like, Amazing. look up on... A... Let me go to IMDb for you. <laughs> well, see if you can see the name Kristen Bird in there starring in a video. Um, I can, actually. I can pull up my own IMDb page oh, if anyone God, needs what it. Oh, an God, what an ego. Jesus, pal. Oh, That's geez. my IMDb page, people. Get away from me. <laughs> but you know what it is? It's like 99% I starred as me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I starred as me. <laughs> I'm not I'm not an actress. I have a couple of like what they call acting credits, but literally I was like the newscaster or whatever. Right. Whatever was needed. But it's just me doing talking head entertainment things. Kristen, did you did you ever was that ever an aspiration of yours to be an actress? Is that something you wanted? <clears throat> Um, not in terms of, I, originally I started out as a professional dancer. That's how I started out my career. So, um, I did a lot of musical theater. So acting is involved in that, but did I ever want to be like a star on a sitcom or anything? No, I don't act well at all. <laughs> oh, you don't? I'm not talented. No, not in that term. You'd be a good actor. You liar. No, I, I feel Not like, you know what happens? It's so funny because, you know, I do a lot of segments where people are like, tell us about Tom Cruise, and I can just go blah, 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 and be natural. But if you gave me, like, a script um, and I had to just do, like, talk, let's say I was acting in a scene with Tom Cruise, I think i just become wooden because I could become self-conscious about it. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, and then, you know, we went down and stepped in the plane and yay, Top Gun. They would be like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Top Gun. You should have an HGTV t uh, television <clears throat> series, though, because you turned a closet into a broadcasting studio. Yeah. Impressive. And I think that is very impressive. Here comes the kitty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there she is. I knew it. There's the kitty. <laughs> she loves you guys so much. She's wonderful. It's so funny. The other cat wants nothing to do with you, but this one well, every morning is here. I heard her once go, oh, Bernard, and leave the room. <laughs> yeah, the boy's it. like, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. The girl, she's here every morning. <laughs> she's um, very sweet. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, the, I, and there was another question, too, just kind of a follow-up on telly. We talked about it, and I probably want to say we talked about it about a month ago. It just, I think they wanted the latest update on what was happening with telly. Um and there is a bit of an update, the because the premise of Telly is they're sending a thousand dollar TV out to you. There are two screens to it, just to refresh everyone's memory. The bottom part of the screen is showing you ads. So this is where, like, this is you know they give you something free, but you are targeted for specific ads on this television. So some of the beta users already have their televisions. Um, other people are going to be starting to be contacted later this month and they will be getting television. So check your email if you did sign up for one of these. Um, I think that there's, there's some good things to this, um, but there's some drawbacks too, of course, because um, in getting more information about it, you're not going to be able to cover up that second screen. And I think a lot of people just thought, you know what, I'll just put cardboard over that. Well, they were smart enough and they put a lot of the oh. software 
interface in that second screen. Like yeah. if you need to use volume or things like that, if you need to change channels, it's going to be on that second bottom half screen. So you have to keep it uncovered in order to use it. They are going to be monitoring your hours as well. It has to be your main television in your house. And uh, so I think if you fall below the threshold and just think, oh, I'll keep it out in my, you know, guest room or something like that, you probably will have to somehow either turn in the TV or it's it's a part of the program that this is the central TV in your house. It's a 55-inch screen oh, TV. Okay. And the other thing is that it just comes with basic apps loaded. So you still are going to need some sort of extor external source in terms of like Roku or a Apple TV um, in order to get all of your streaming networks and everything else. So how big is that TV? Is that about 50 inches? The one to my right here? Uh, I think that's a little bigger. I believe that's like a 60. Oh, is it a 60? Uh, maybe even a 72. It's it's a big one. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's big. One, two, three. Uh, 60. I bet you it's a 60. Yeah, it's got to be make, somewhere. That makes sense. You that guys probably know sense. this because your men and have a weird obsession with size of TVs, but I did not know it's that not they... It's TVs size. It's another thing. It's how, it's how you use it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget. But I didn't know that the way you, you measure right TV is that. corner to corner. Yeah. Corner yeah, corner Same to corner. Same with yeah. your t uh, computer yep. screen. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. didn't you didn't know. really? No, until, like, I mean, I found that out maybe like three years ago. Did you ever get out of the house? No. You really don't, do you? No, I just think that was just like a weird fact that somehow I missed. I wasn't out buying a bunch of TVs in my 20s. She I, missed television measuring school. I missed that class. Mm -hmm. You know what's funny about that? That's when, when I started making money, one of the first things I did was buy a color television. That's such a guy thing to do. It's, it is a very guy thing to do. When me it? and Justin got married, he's like, because I had this tiny little screen I used for everything. And he was like, so you don't need to move that into our home. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that. Oh, Just man. get rid of it. I knew the things had changed when I saved every last. When I first got hired at 93X and we were doing like live gigs, we were doing bar gigs, you were mm -hmm. getting cash. Straight cash. And every single bar gig, I would take $100 and I'd just suck, sock it away. Yep. And finally, I, I had enough money and I went out and I bought a $1,200 flat screen plasma TV for like 50, or whatever it was, uh, like 1500 bucks or something. Yep, you know, I can't a, remember exactly. Yeah. It was like yeah, 50 inch or something. Yeah. And I brought it. I, I had this old 36 inch tube TV that was perfect. It had no problems. Yeah. So I brought it to the station. And I thought, well, there's all these interns. They're not paid. I'll just give one of these kids, you know, the tube TV for free. Yeah. I thought I was doing a nice gesture. I pull into the uh, you know, the little area where the interns are. I'm like, hey, you guys, I know there's like six or seven of you, but if you want, I got a 36-inch TV in my car right now for free. If you want it, stop on by. And everyone there was like, dude, we got like 60-inch flat screens <laughs> on the wall already. Like, what are you talking about? 36-inch tube TV? How Whoops. old are you? I'm like, I'm 27. There you I'm go. not that old. They were like, yeah, the sorry, man. TV. Yeah. So I just, That's so funny. Yeah, I just drove it over to Northeast and just stuck it on a curb. I'm like, somebody will take this TV for free. It's true. And by the way, I'd like to mention that he, when he just stashed that 100 bucks at a time, after he paid his taxes is when he went out and bought the TV. Yes, of course. I just like to point that part Well, out. yeah. No, I mean, because <laughs> we, well, yeah. yeah. we got paid $1,200 at a bar gig, so obviously Did I paid really? No, God, no, are you kidding? No. I was going to say, I, I don't even know how much a bar gig. I've never done one. No, gosh, not a, yeah, not at all. No, we never got anywhere near that. But I do remember when I first came to Minneapolis, because I came from La Crosse, Wisconsin, we got $40 an hour. When we did Ooh, bar gigs, see? forty an hour—that was big, big money back then. Forty. Whew. Wow. And think when you're in your hour. when you're in your twenties too to get paid to go to a bar, you're like, this yeah. is the best day yeah, of my right? life. Yeah. I mean, it was so exciting. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. I bet you that tube TV turned into a planner. If you drop it off at Northeast, somebody turned it into a planner. Oh, yeah. for sure. a, somebody's got fish swimming in that thing uh, right now. Absolutely, yeah. the mm -hmm. aquarium. <laughs> Actually. Rudy mentioned this morning that he's going to give you a desktop dial phone by the oh, end nice. of the show. I just, I gave one to my daughter for her birthday. Oh, yeah, he did. <laughs> That's phenomenal. She wanted a new phone, so I was like, here you go. Here you go, it's desktop. A brand new desktop. I bet she appreciated that instead of a $1,200 iPhone. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Probably mm -hmm. not. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. I was just thinking about it. You know, I just love the fact that in your life you, you hear words and all of a sudden these things pop up in your head. What popped up in my head talking about the old desktop phone with the handle you'd hold to your head and all that stuff? At a party, 
Guy gets pissed off, and another guy hit him right in the face with that phone thing. Dang. Oh, God, that looked like it hurt. So technically, My. Rudy gave his daughter a weapon. Oh, yeah, look Perfect. at that bad boy. Yeah. Isn't that funny? That's, that, that, is, that looks like James Bond, man. Somebody had pointed out that they think that's the same phone that uh, Charlie used to call the call the angels. Uh, see? I'm pretty sure it's oh, the same. Oh, did it have like, one of those? Like, yeah. Yeah, yep. it's the same model. I got to look it up still, but I'm pretty Can sure. Can I post this pic on ours? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Your daughter. It might picture. be an absolute like movie relic. Do you want your daughter's picture on there, or do you want her to? to blow no, it? it's fine. No, okay. my daughter. Yeah, she's. I'm, her dad has been trying to become famous for two decades now. So that's her, got nothing her, to do with her, though. Her face is all over the internet. Oh, I suppose that's true. Yeah. <laughs> There's no privacy. We nah, don't care. It's fine. <laughs> I suppose that's true. So what else? Um, there's two premieres tonight. In case people are looking for TV, it is the premiere of the final season of Never Have I Ever on Netflix, which is Mindy Kaling's series. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. She's a creator. She does not star in it. And if people haven't watched that, it's such a good show. Have you seen it, Brittany? No, I haven't. It's really good. I don't necessarily know if you guys would like it, but it's about a young teen girl. And I think what made it really interesting is um, she's South Asian. And I think that, you know, that um, culture hasn't been covered a lot, especially in a comedy. Um, and she's a, just like kind of like growing up and trying to fit in. And she's like, her aunt lives nearby and like trying to live under her mom's like traditional rule. It's, it, it's really well done. It's smart. Um, it's funny. This is the final season. So you can go and binge watch it if you want to, because it comes out on Netflix today. There's four seasons altogether. And then I know you and Kaylee Cuoco have like some type of war going on, but her show based on a true story does come out today on Peacock. So if anyone's looking for something new, they can go and check that out as well. That's pretty cool. You're fighting Kaylee? Yeah, <clears throat> why don't you and Kaylee get along? Kaylee who? Cuoco? <laughs> Kaylee Cuoco. Because she was yeah. a pain in the ass the first time she was ever on my morning show. She was r incredibly arrogant. But I think she was only about 17 years old, so that might have had something to do with it. Was it back when she was on the show Ten Simple Rules with John Ritter? Yes. Yep. That's when yeah, she was she on. She was yep. a teenager at that time. <clears throat> yeah, so she, I can seven. forgive her, but but I haven't talked to her since. She's, uh, But, yeah, I, I talked to her a couple of times when she was a kid. She was, and I suppose she was a teenager now and a national, internationally known, so I guess I could forgive her. Have you ever talked to teenagers no. I mean, they're amazing, and I actually, that's one of my favorite ages. I love that age. But when you talk to one who doesn't know you, you get nothing. You just oh, get, true, it's yeah. just, mm -hmm. and, and it's point. in their own, they're in their own head. We actually, there was a bunch of Girl Scouts at an event I was, I was at for uh, Secondhand Hounds, <clears> and they were raising money for Secondhand Hounds. I was like, tell me about your products. And they're like, we made these bracelets to raise money. <laughs> and they were Girl Scouts. And I was like, I was starting to feel insecure. I was like, is my outfit ugly? Is my hair ugly? Like, what? Do they hate me? And I'm like, oh, no. They're teenagers. Mm -hmm. Yep, they right. are. Isn't it amazing how they make you feel, like, insecure about yourself? Oh. You're like, oh, my gosh. The neighbor, McKenna, she, her and I have the, uh, the same birthday. She just turned 15. Or, yep, she just turned 15. And she said to me, that's my favorite shirt you own. And I thought to myself, does she hate all my other shirts? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. You're, you're Prob I mean, probably, really well. right? <laughs> it's like, Good God. So now, if I have the choice, I always grab that one. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite shirt you own. <gasps> I had that happen, too, recently. My friend's daughter, I invited her to something. Because when I need a plus one, she's at the, kind of at the right age to take her to fun things. And she didn't text me back. And I thought, oh, my gosh, have I hit that age where I'm just, like, so uncool. I can't even take her to a Hollywood event. And then I saw her mom at a workout class. And she just said, oh, Maddie's phone, like, broke. And it's been out of service for three days. And here I am feeling super insecure <laughs> mm -hmm. that I was no longer cool for her to text me back. Oh, I mean, Rudy's daughter, I made her a couple bracelets for her birthday, wrote thank you, and I wrote like a paragraph back, and I go, that's too much. Oh, no. I get, <laughs> that's much. mortifying. Oh, she's, yeah. she hates me. So on her birthday on Tuesday, I said, hey, by the way, did you text Brittany thank you? And she was like, yeah. And it was the first time they had ever had a communication together. And uh, and my daughter went, yeah. I said, well, did Brittany say anything back? And all she did was hold up her phone and then scroll oh, and God, just kept I scrolling. I was like, did you read all that? She's like, uh-huh. I was like, I'd have been done three sentences in. I'm, no, it's too much. She, 
<laughs> did you get a response, Britt? <laughs> yeah, I, it was fine. But I was like, after I wrote, because I was about to jump into a tennis game, so I wanted to get it all out because I didn't want her to feel vulnerable. Like, she made me feel. <laughs> but she wrote back. She was lovely. But even when I was writing, I was like, this is, oh, no. After I pushed that door, I was like, she asked me what her favorite song was, and I wanted to give her options. I just, I spiraled. I'm so <laughs> <laughs> Just, and everyone's a boomer to someone who's a teenager. So she's like, oh, boomer. I just want her to think I'm God. cool. It's a disease I have. I will. Does she want to see puppies? I'll bring her to the rescue. What does she want from me? Mm -hmm. I will do it. I do hate the fact that everybody makes fun of boomers. It drives me insane that it's like a millennial will say like, OK, boomer, OK. It's like, well, if it wasn't for boomers, like, we wouldn't have bridges and roads, you idiots. That's correct. Like, why are you guys? And don't forget, I don't know if you know this, life is cyclical. One day, millennials will be boomers. Yep. So stop yep. making fun we'll of them. We'll be going millennials. Yeah. <laughs> but the only problem we have, of course, is that we came along right after the greatest generation, and there's a hell of a lot. I'm sorry, but you do have a lot of pressure on you because that greatest generation, my parents gave their lives, my parents didn't give their lives, but friends of my parents, all the rest in World War II. To follow that generation is a bitch. So mm -hmm. don't be too hard on the boomers is all I'm yeah. saying. We don't even know if there's going to be an earth because <clears throat> New York right now is so smoking, <laughs> you can't even breathe there. Uh, I understand it's now Philadelphia is being affected by it. A lot it's of places being affected probably by Probably moving down. I know they canceled <clears throat> several Broadway shows because the performers couldn't even sing because the smoke was coming into the theater. Really? I mean, it's, it's bad. Yeah. And, and we, we endure this a lot. We have yeah. fire season yep. here yeah. in yeah. Los Angeles. And to see people raw dogging it out in Manhattan with no mask is literally really? shocking to me. God, because you can't even see across the street on camera. You can't, and it's it, the air is carcinogenic. I like you cannot, yeah, you cannot be doing this. And and you know, people are like, let me go out and jog. I'm like, why are you jogging in this? And the migraines you will get from this type of um, level of smoke mm -hmm. in the air, they're excruciating. So you just you just got to stay inside. Or if you're going out, if you have to go out, you at least need like a KN95 mask, the minimum. Uh, I yeah, I'm sorry, but I was not big on the mask. I wore my mask for two years, even though I knew it didn't do a damn thing, and it turned out it didn't do a damn thing. So, would those masks even keep that smoke out? They they will keep some out. They, they will, will help. Some, yeah, okay. I mean, it's not going. <clears throat> yeah, to that's be, true. That's true. I mean, unless you're going to wear like one of those military grade masks. Yeah, that's the only right. thing that's really going to protect you. But if you have to go out and all you have is a KN95, don't go out with a surgical mask. That'll do nothing for it you. It does nothing. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just saying this from we've had horrible fire seasons over the years. Stay inside, honestly. That's what they said on the national news last night. He says, don't go outside. You want an answer to this? Do not go outside. Don't go inside. Don't go outside. <clears throat> Run your air filters nonstop. Right. Uh, seal up your doors and your windows. I mean, it's it's tough. Was it lightning that started this fire up in Canada? I don't know. I don't know how the fire started. I have no idea. Yeah, it's extensive, though. And yeah, it's really it talking. Is. And it, it's been going on for weeks and weeks. And I think it just didn't hit national news until the smoke started coming down toward the U.S. The Maple Leafs lost in the Stanley Cup playoffs. That's what it that's was. That's yeah, what it that's was. It. Yeah. They were so pissed off, they started on fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have no idea what started that fire up there, but I'm assuming it probably was lightning or something like that. I'm assuming, but who the hell knows? I don't know. It can be arson. We had one yeah, here in, in California that was started by a gender reveal party. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. But it was a it was a really great party. Yeah. We just wanted to figure it out. You burned the entire forest down. Look, it's a well, boy or a girl. Burned people's homes down. Killed a man. Yeah, the couple was actually yep. convicted. They're yep. they're in prison, and then they're on the hook for millions of dollars. Which, of course, you know, what did they, they do? Don't have the means to pay back. What started the fire? I don't get a gender reveal. I thought it was you like, yeah, shot off a pink or blue cannon or something. Um, some it depends on what you use, but oh, it was a okay. smoke cannon, and it. Caught fire and spread so rapidly within a matter of minutes. Really? Yeah. Jesus. Because when it's windy, I mean, you just have to be smart about this. I'm like, do a cake if you're going to do gender reveal. Like, go and get a bunch of cupcakes. Cake Everyone be bite good. into it. Call Actually, it a day. You know, when my daughter and her husband were about to have their first baby, you know, they did the gender reveal. I know. It was so cool. They turned on their Christmas tree. Oh. 
Oh, uh, that's a fun blue. idea. It was, yeah, it was a Christmas tree, and they turned uh, and the lights came on pink, and I went, "Oh, damn it!" I was hoping it'd be a boy fawn. <laughs> I was like, "Yes, fawn." Yes. I wanted a boy. Oh, I didn't want it you. It was so special. It was so fun. <laughs> it they was, had it was, it was a treat. Gender the... reveal on Saturday. You oh, do. Nice. Yes, I'm going to be FaceTiming in and watching it, but it's just funny. Gender reveals, we don't really do them in California, so uh, but she's in Georgia, so it's a big, like, to-do, but Georgia. she's like, are you going to fly in? I was like, no, but I'll FaceTime in. I'll FaceTime in, <laughs> and that seems appropriate. We just did, yeah, uh, we just did a big oh. balloon pop, and it was perfect. Yeah. It was yeah, just, you know, and we let my na- the girl I nannied, uh, she's a teenager, and so we let her, she's the only one who had the information, and she was in charge of doing all the stuff, so for a while... For like one whole week, she was the only one that knew the gender, and she was uh, 13 at the time. So it was so funny when she's like, ah, I know, Brittany, and I can't talk to you, so we just avoided each other. I feel like I can't even look at you. I know. <laughs> look how far medicine's come, though. I mean, seriously. Because back when I was born, my name is Thomas because it means twin. Yeah. Because they thought I was such a big, large child that they thought I was twins. That's why my name is Thomas. So nice gender reveal back in those days. Huh? They didn't even have them. That's so wild. And that is exciting. Did, did you guys find out Kimmy's gender? I tell people this all the time when they ask about gender. I'm like, listen, everything on everything is on the Internet nowadays. There's no secrets. Every person that you like, right, every, every right. celebrity, every band, you can find out all that information. The only thing that can be kept secret is the gender of your baby if you choose to keep it. There's nothing better than when that baby is born. When my daughter uh, came out onto this planet and the doctor went, does dad want to call it? And they turned the baby around and I said, it's a girl. There's no better feeling than that. To just have somebody hand you a picture and go, it's a boy. No, who cares? That is exciting. And the thing, and I hate the excuse where people go, well, what happens with our friends? I mean, they have to know if they should buy something for a boy or a, go- a girl. I'm like, there's a target on every corner. If they can't stop by and get an LGBTQ onesie for our, exactly. ju- our kid. With a dick on it. Yes. Live, within, last, lo- live laugh, lesbo, lesbo, right? Within the first three days, they're not our God. friends. So I always tell everybody, don't find out. It's a great, that it moment is. when that baby pops out and you find out if it's a boy or a girl, there's nothing that beats That's it. That's got to be really exciting. That's what happened with Andy. We had no idea Andy was a boy. Yeah. We had yeah. no clue he was a boy but they then told Alex my mama was a boy oh they did <laughs> so they were right my name was eric <laughs> eric the reporter which is now my brother because he got the name it got passed That's down good. to him so you didn't know if andy was going to be a, a boy no, but you knew he was you knew alex's yeah because she had health problems oh typical and typical was, alex complaining about something you know exactly you know. getting you into that appointment every week <laughs> Yeah, that's the only re- reason we knew she was a girl, because she had some health complications. But got, thank God she got through them and got two healthy kids. And Well, I, could you call Andy healthy? Because he's always crabby. Is that healthy? Yeah, and he literally is not always healthy. <laughs> he, honest to God, is the most intolerant young man I've ever seen. That's not a very good point you're making. I'm like, oh, God, settle down, will you? Rudy, when they showed you the baby, mm-hmm. was there any part of you where you're like, girl? Like, because... Oh. Things are a little no, not because of what the baby looked like, but things are a little chaotic in that moment. I mean, I had foster puppies, and I would pick them up and go, "What? What is this?" Was there a half second where you go, "Uh"? I said, "This is no joke." I literally, I was, I was sobbing so hard that when, when they turned the baby around, she said, "Does Dad want to call it?" And I looked down, and I was crying so hard. I said, "I don't know what that is. <laughs> I, know. I, I have no too. clue." I would too. I'm not <laughs> trying to. It's just a lot of things are going on. There's attachments here and there i would have and you're a mess of a person your eyes are all watery yeah i would have been like can you write it in a note so i can say it yeah and i remember the doctor kind of laughed and she goes how'd you make this thing (laughs) there you go there you have it that's amazing all right young lady we got to hit the road but i think your weekend's gonna no it's gonna be a good weekend isn't it I hope so. I mean, for you. One Mm -hmm. more day, right? Today's Thursday, isn't it? No, that's true. I keep thinking it's Friday today, and I don't know why. I was like, I think I'm going to be here tomorrow. No, (laughs) we're getting ready. But our weekends start Friday, Kristen, so we mentally won't be here. I mean, we'll physically be Mm -hmm. here, but I'm never actually here, so don't worry about it. (laughs) I'm still processing Vanderpump rules from last night, so there you go. Girl, same. Oh, my God. That's all we're going to (laughs) say. Thank God we blew right past that. 
Well, Tom, the good news is that this was like the finale. Next week is just like unaired footage, which is not, it's nothing burger, but uh, you at least have a break until season 11 premieres. Well, what about the Kardashians? We'll work on that oh, one. God, get away from me. Yeah. All right, we will talk to you tomorrow. Sounds good. Bye, we'll everyone. Take a break. Be right back. KSTP Channel 5's Chris Eggert is up next. This is the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Listen live at TomBernardShow.com or on the Tom Bernard Show app. There's a guy named Tom Cross who likes to do kite things. Tom takes the phrase, go fly a kite to an extreme, and for years goes all over the country in search of great kite flying events. Lincoln City, Oregon comes to mind with Chinook winds and seven miles of pristine beach that draws folks from all over North America for the best kite flying conditions in the world. Tom brings a little Minnesota with him when he goes to Lincoln City in his new Forest River RV Rockwood Rue, 19 expandable trailer, of course, that he hauls from Niemeyer Trailer Sales in Albertville and Elk New Market, Minnesota. Niemeyer Trailer Sales is the only place Tom would prepare his next kite flight. Solar panels, full bath, exterior griddle, double door refrigerator, queen beds, and sleeps six every night in the RV Rockwood from the place that is your family owned guide to RV trailers and truck accessories since 1965. This is Tom. Visit my friends at Niemeyer Trailer Sales and take your passion on the road. Niemeyer Trailer Sales. Go to N I E M E Y E R S dot com. Niemeyer trailer sale mm -hmm. hey welcome i'm tom bernard we're here with chris eggert and rudy welcome gentlemen what's up nothing we are all uh we all ran around and took a bathroom break so yeah and we walked into the bathroom i don't know if you guys have ever worked in a building where the stalls of the bathroom are always occupied no. There is always, yeah. there is two stalls in the men's bathroom on this floor, and every time you walk in there, there are two dudes that are always sitting in there, stinking up the joint, not moving. I don't know if everybody's doing the Wordle or if they're playing, uh, you know, words with friends with one another, but every time you walk in there, one of those stalls is always occupied, and I'm, I'm standing at the urinal, and I hear Tom behind me, and I'm like, hey, man, we got a couple extra minutes, so, and he's like, I'll just, I gotta go run down to the other bathroom. Yeah. Um, I... I have a theory. Oh, go ahead, Brittany. No, 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 you, Chris. I have a theory about that. I feel people will stay in there until they think the coast is clear, and then they'll walk out and wash their hands and all that. Like, mm -hmm. there's some kind of shame in Pooping. being in there. Yeah, making noise. Like, it's terrifying to make noise. Yeah. yeah. It, there's a character from the movie American Pie that they call Shit Break. Yeah. Because he has, oh, to, yeah. he has to go home to use the bathroom. I've never yep. identified with a character of a movie yeah. more where I'd be at high school and I'm like, listen, I can't wait to become a junior because you can leave the, the campus and I would run home, grab a quick bite to eat, use the bathroom. I, I hate it. I hate being in a stall next to people. I hate the fact that the dividers don't go all the way to the floor. I want privacy. Like, so play some Enya in there, would you? I want to I want yeah. I want to, you know, a little bit of essential oils burning. Right. I don't want all of the it feels just so open and not private at all. We got we could make a million dollars if we made a bathroom soundtrack that was just like not exactly poopy noises but things that hid poopy noise as well just like pure chaos maybe jazz yeah maybe jazz would be the thing just running water the sound of running water in the speakers because tom i was talking about how every time we go into that bathroom the stalls are always occupied and there's two dudes that are just completely clearing out the joint that's a fact <laughs> it's awful what just happened to me has never happened to me before in my life i'll oh, tell no. you this I go down to the men's room, and all three, the urinal and both stalls, are taken. And so I said, ah, oh, no big deal. I'll just go around the other side of the building, which is about two and a half, three city blocks. Yeah. It is that far. It's sure. very far. Yeah. Got over there. Both stalls and the urinal were taken. <laughs> I had to wait anyway and on I, the other side of the world. That's terrible. I also think that there are people that have jobs here that are don't get to use their phones. And that's the only time mm -hmm. I had a job like that where you couldn't bring your phone out. Only, oh, yeah. you know, and that was like such a nice relief is to go on your phone. How yeah. did you know that? Because that's one of the problems I had. There was a guy on his phone in one of the stalls. And I'm not kidding you. It was, you tell that son of a bitch. I'm like, Jesus. And not to make things worse, but I think there's three women on this floor in total. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's uh, not a lot. I got to bring my dog Murphy into the bathroom, and we didn't see a soul. See, so. yeah. Murphy went in the bathroom. Yeah. It's all true.
So that's it for the pee and poop news. What else you got, Chris? Yeah, Chris, that's the well, update. I, I want to double down on this because um, nice. I have a I have a, a take on this. It some might find controversial. Um, when you're in there taking a dump, get the frick off your phone. Like get in I there agree. and get out. Yep. Mm-hmm. I don't read on the. I don't read when I'm on the nope. pot. I don't look at my phone. Like who wants to sit there in your own smell and Not me. have a, a freaking half hour break? Just get out and then get out of there. Even at yeah. home, you don't take your time? No, it's not a celebration. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. I get in and out fast as I can. I like taking Especially, my time. I yeah. like I like making it an event. It's the only time sometimes An again, event? Yeah. It's the only time sometimes I'm alone, and yeah. that is precious to me. And so I find myself just sitting in there staring at the abyss. Puts down a picnic blanket and puts on some Teddy Pendergrass. Sure. I do think there's a new level of low if you consume food while pooping, which is something I have. Why would you ever oh, do God. that? Oh, Jesus. By accident. There's times oh. in my life where you just like her eating and you just jump in and you're like, whoa, oh. these are two <laughs> conflicting things I'm doing. Mm-hmm. You didn't notice you were eating when you sat down to crap. It's like a very dark what? moment. <laughs> In the hell is wrong with you? Just eat on. What are you eating? I, it was definitely those pretzels that they have, those uh, peanut butter pretzels they have from Costco, because I grab handfuls of those all the time in the big container. I I'm... need to yell at one of the one of you three because it was one of you three yesterday that brought up caramel M and M's. Oh you, yeah, you Who brought did? it up. No, somebody yeah, else brought yeah, it up for yeah, you. Did. Thousand percent yeah, it's your it fault. You said, are caramel M&M's good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I asked. That's right. I asked <laughs> the question. thousand percent. I went to, to, to Lunds and Byerly's at 50th and France. Did you get a pack? And it's gone already. I ate mm-hmm. an entire, not the little. Oh, you can't just eat. Kit. You have to eat the whole thing. You have to eat the whole damn thing. You, can, you yeah. can't physically stop. Oh, my stop. God, those are good. Every Them th- are good, as they used to say. On Father's Day or any event that is a you know, as a present, I always get my husband like the family sharing one, and we finish that thing immediately. <laughs> there you go. It's really good for your health to be eating. Not a problem thing. there. I ate the whole damn bag. It's so good. It's really good. Caramel M and M's, Chris. They're good. Yeah, I, I, I don't have it. I don't I try not to have that crap around the house because if it's there, oh, you're just gonna eat it. I know. That's and, how I am. And I don't know what's been going on lately, but I've had a like. Super. I don't generally have a sweet tooth, but it's like when there's nothing around, I'm like a a freaking addict looking for a hit, and I can't find anything. And <laughs> you're like, "Will you MacGyver yourself yeah, something?" Yeah, like, well, oh look, it's a lollipop in the bottom of the drawer from 15 years ago. Yeah, that'll work. Unwrap it, and we had leftover Dairy Queen cake for my daughter's birthday oh, party. Love it. And I and I Sunday night I opened up the freezer and there was one slice in there and I'm like, "Okay, this is the downstairs freezer. Nobody goes into Ooh. it." So Monday after the show, I walk downstairs, I open up that freezer door, I look. Not only was the slice of Dairy Queen cake gone, somebody left an empty container in the freezer. Yeah. I've never lost my mind more. I'm like, I don't even care about the fact I didn't get cake. I'm so angry that you guys were so lazy that nobody threw out the empty giant container. Isn't it? Wasn't it the birthday girl? I don't think so, no. Okay, because no. I was going to say, she's earned that last piece of cake. Uh, I'm the guy who paid for it. Yeah, so. it's her birthday. <laughs> Tom, where do you fall on that? Who gets the last piece of cake? Me. See? The birthday girl. Well, but Dairy Queen cake is a whole different thing. Yeah, there thing. you okay, go. All, all rules are off. Are oh, I love Dairy Queen. <laughs> love it. Always have, always will. Yeah, it's Especially so good. chocolate cones. Love chocolate. Chocolate Dairy Queen cones. Found Phenomenal. out they got rid of the cherry dip. Oh, did they really? Yeah, I love that. Goddamn stuff. Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. Typical. <laughs> thanks, Obama. Yeah, thanks, Obama. <laughs> I want my change back. <laughs> Warren Buffett does own Dairy Queen now, doesn't he? That, does yeah. he? Oh, I'm pretty yeah, sure he does. Yeah. Huh. Yep. Yep. Not Obama. Warren Buffett. <laughs> Obama huh. owns about a billion dollars in cash, though. I love how all these presidents now, they become president. Donald Trump did it. Obama did it. So both sides did it. I'm going to become president and write seven books while I'm the president. It's like, really? You're going to cash in, are you? Don't Good worry. For you. They're not actually writing them, so don't worry I about it. I understand that, but they are cashing in big time. No, I've never read a book written by a president, ever. I would never. Like, who cares? The closest I got was reading Mariah Carey's book. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's close yeah. to the presidency right there. <laughs> Absolutely. 
No question about it. So I have to ask you a question. Something just popped up on my screen. What the hell happened to Jamie Foxx? He went blind now? Is that correct? I heard seven trillion different right. things about right. what, And the, the theory was at first that he had a stroke. Right. Um, I, and I, I, don't, I don't know that anything is verifiable with this situation as near as I can tell. Did he go blind, though? I'm, so nobody knows that. Because it says here, no, he did not go blind from a COVID shot. Well, who thought he did? The, he, well, there were people that were speculating that maybe the oh. vaccine may have oh. had something to do with this because they are seeing a spike in strokes since, over the last 18 months to two oh, years. Oh, there you go. So maybe, but I, I don't know. Hmm. And here's the other headline. We just already on the Tom Bernard show said, don't waste your time. Masks return as Canadian wildfire smoke moves south. Those masks are not going to do anything for you. Get a surgical mask or it's not going to work. Right. Yeah, that's there. People in New York are trying to wear them or something. But yeah, that that you see some of those videos of like the yes. Brooklyn Bridge and crap yesterday. I mean, yep. that is that's that's legit. It is. I mean, that that is some thick ass smoke, man. That mm -hmm. smoke is thick. Uh, you know, we we had a little here. What about a month ago? We had a little bit of smoke in the air, but it wasn't anywhere near that much. Jesus. No. That, and there's been, a you know, you could see a little tinge in the in the sky, but nothing, nothing that bad. Although yeah, the other morning yep. was it Monday morning. I think we had for the first time, what I could tell you could actually see the smoke layer kind of like from our sky cams, like stuck between the clouds mm -hmm. and the ground. Yeah. And yeah. like, it was like Brown, like, like it looked like in, in New York the other day, but it, I mean, obviously nothing. And we don't have the amount of cars on the road. And right. it's just a, you know, it's a, it's a uh, goulash of different contaminants in the air that sort of makes it that way. Yeah, I sure. could see that to be true. No doubt about it. So, yeah, I just, that's really unfortunate. I can't even imagine being in New York when it's that smoky. My God. I don't know. I've hung out in a lot of casinos. Oh, there you got. So, back in the day, man. Yeah, yeah. Woo! I used to call it bingo at a VFW. I've been, oh, I've been yeah. in the smoke. Oh, yeah, you've yeah. been in the smoke. Yeah. <laughs> yep. No doubt about it. No, no. You know what? Actually, I have a friend. You guys know anybody that smokes cigarettes? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, do you? Mm -hmm. yep. Do they want to quit? Uh, I don't think so. Why well, not? I can ask. Why don't they want to quit? Yeah. I don't know. Somebody, somebody asked me to help somebody quit. So should I do that? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Uh oh, Chris goes, ah, I don't know. What do you it's think, a, Chris? It's a big ask. Like, yeah, but they shouldn't be smoking, it's, man. It's not good for you. Well, that, that might be true, um, but I, I know I have got a couple friends who smoke, and uh, they know it's not good for them. They stop or they'll cut way off from time to time, and they'll vape instead of actually having real cigarettes. But at the end of the day, they know it's bad for them, and they're the ones who decide whether or not they do it. And I don't you get involved in it, then you're like somehow you're like being blamed for not helping well, defuse the situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I quit smoking when I was 12. I started smoking when I was 11. I quit smoking when I was 21. You know why I quit smoking? Not kidding you. Cause it, why? Because a friend of mine's father was a smoker, went over to his house, and his dad would look like a mummy, right? Uh -huh. He's literally looking like a mummy. They had to take the entire left side of his jaw off. Uh -huh. Oh, God, was that not a good look. And then you see him from then on and be go. How are you doing, Tommy? Oh, God, and it was sad. Did they at that time attribute it to smoking? Oh, yeah. They it was, did? Wow. It was definitely smoking. That's impressive. That because I mean, This whole thing was gone. Oh. I mean, like from here up. His lower jaw, not his upper jaw. So eventually, I, th I assume eventually they put like a bear trap in there or something so you'd have a jaw that, so you could eat. I mean, he couldn't mm -hmm. even eat for a while. <laughs> I was always scared by the guys who had that oh, yeah. Yeah, well, thing on there. I was down on there yesterday and talking I, to them. Yeah, that, that thing always freaked me out. And I'm like, yep. uh. I had everything going for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had, a, I had a beautiful ranch in Montana. <laughs> you know what it just struck me when you were doing that? Wouldn't it be great if you went to one of those uh, karaoke nights and some guy with one of those got up yeah. there? I want to hold your hand. They start singing along with their... <laughs> 
What's it called? What's it called? Like a Voxalux or an Electrolux or what the hell is it called? I don't know. There's it's a name for it. A anyway. hole in your neck is whatever what we all called it. <laughs> oh, I used to like it when people used to smoke through the hole oh, in their sure. neck. Oh, sure. I've yeah, seen yeah. that. Yeah. Got the big brown stain right here on their neck, and they're like... Yeah. Sucking them in, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many times in the hospital somebody will come in with extreme burn marks or a circle around their mouth because they're on oxygen, they're not supposed to be smoking, and they do both still? And they do that ventilator size. Murphy, are you still in my pen? Why are you stealing my pen? He's so bored with us, by the way. (laughs) He really is bored. He's absolutely like, oh, God. I brought my golden retriever in today. Show the baby boy. He's definitely. Oh, look at him. He's, he's bored. Like, he's not. I mean, if we reflect on that, we're not very interesting to him. Well, that's good to know for the downloads. That's great to hear. That golden retrievers are not They're our demographic. Not the, I yeah. wanted all the golden retrievers. Don't worry. He doesn't have a phone, so he doesn't count anyway. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Can we uh, remember this the next time Frank Vassalero brings his dogs in? To yeah. Be like, be like, this is how a dog should act when in a pro- <laughs> podcasting studio. Not friggin' losing your mind, Frank. How about Judy? Judy behaves when he comes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Judy. Dude. God, what a squirrel that dog is. I love that dog. I love that dog. Judy. So, Chris, I'll just yes. try to think. So, I'm looking at the news and uh, the headlines. You know, it's Jamie Foxx. Pat Robertson died at 93. I told him to die at 92.5, but then I got fired. So, I said, go ahead and die at 93. It's fine now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, not a lot of really good new Biden votes, uh, vetoes blo- a bill to block student loan forgiveness. So what does he want to do? I don't even know what the hell that, what do you mean student loan forgiveness? What, uh, well, what does the president they, have to do with that? They, well, they were, um, they, ever since COVID came into place, uh-huh. they were letting people punt, kick the can down the can, right. kick their student loans down. Um, but I think part of the, uh, that big, the budget deal that they reached would bring that to an end. Mm-hmm. And I believe um, President Biden had been extending that and extending and extending it. And I think they put a stop date on that now. And so maybe they're going back to try to change that. So what does it mean? What, who's paying what? And was it trillions of dollars or what, what are we talking about here? Well, and we're also they're also, you know, paying back a certain amount of money of people's student loans too, which was another part of that. Mm-hmm. I don't know that that changed in this particular legislation. I, I, but I do think when the payback was supposed to start for people, I think that that may have changed, but it's, it's always been uh, about as clear as mud as to how that whole thing. Yeah. Well, that's what I was asking. Why, why I asked you, cause yeah. I don't understand what the hell are you even talking about? I mean, I know some people has got several hundred, like I know a doctor, he just became a doctor, as a matter of fact, and he's got tons of debt because going to medical school is not cheap. Mm-hmm. No doubt about that. Definitely but not. I, I mean, the only problem I have with that is, and I'm not saying it is this situation, but it appears to me when, when a president of the United States does that, I don't care if it's a Democrat or a Republican, when they do something like that, it looks to me like they're just trying to buy your vote. That's all it looks like to me. I can't disagree with that. And it's That's young disgusting. people too, right? So it's like the people who you want. It's it's a group of people who you want to try to have on your yep. side. And I yeah, I, I don't know if it's politically motivated, but it certainly it it's, feels like it could be. That's for well, sure. All of the border crossing. That's all about buying your vote. This is all about buying. It's all about keeping me in power now. Well, it always has been, though, I suppose. Yeah. Disgusting. Mm-hmm. It's disgusting. They're taking our money to buy people's votes. I, I Look, I understand college is way damn too expensive. We should have, what the government should have done, instead of paying back loans, they should have stepped in decades ago and said, you cannot charge that much for a kid to go to college. I mean, some of these colleges are now $80,000 a year. It's ridiculous. Holy Christ. In fact, U of M's got a, they had a meeting. It started at eight o'clock this morning. The Board of Regents is trying to raise tuition at the Minneapolis and Rochester campuses, oh, three per, another three and a half percent. Oh, why? They've all got billions of dollars in the bank. They, they, they have to say they have to keep up with the pace of inflation and pay their Bullshit. workers more and yes. yada, yada, Written. yada. Brittany, will you look up and see how much Harvard has in the bank? I guarantee you it's We looked this billion. up the other day. Yeah, wasn't did. it like, like it was 50 billions? Billion, right? It was billions yeah. of dollars. So yeah. they got billions of dollars, but somehow you got to pay more. Okay, I get it. 
That's disgusting. People in their goddamn money grubbing. I gotta stop saying goddamn. I hate it when people say that. You I've don't, said it twice this morning. You hate it? I don't like that. Right. Well, goddamn, because my mother didn't like it. I love saying Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, Jesus Palomino. I That's like, a good one. I know it's like blasphemy. How about Jesus H. Christ? Yeah, that, see all that, that one's in there. And like, God damn, I love that. I don't know. You know what I think about these Spanish kids in my neighborhood? Because they used to say, Jesus Cristo. I'm like, what? <laughs> so I went with Jesus Cristo for a while because it sounded a lot better, didn't it? Mm -hmm. It does sound better. Snazzy, kind of. So what do you got? Harvard. Oh, 50.9 billion. 50.9 billion, mm -hmm. and they're raising tuition. Uh, it's this has got us. The, the money grubbing is so disgusting. It's unbelievable. But let's move on to another more positive subject, shall we? Yeah. You it. want some more money grubbing? <laughs> yes. Let's go with that. I got Uncle oh. Tommy fired up now. Let's you go. You do. I'm all uh, fired up. The state of Minnesota has opened up the possibility again to installing red light cameras everywhere. <sighs> really? For what reason? Uh, to make money. Oh, to go for speed and light runners. I mean, they're going like to say it's to deter speeding, but <laughs> you know how much uh, I've been tagged several times traveling through Iowa. I, I won't make the mistake again, <laughs> but uh, it's, I mean, it's all money. Those yeah. cameras are generating millions and millions and millions of dollars because people are un unsuspecting and they get you. I mean, don't, I don't, I'm not advocating driving against, you know, higher than the speed limit yes but, i understand but that's so funny i've been pulled over twice in the last about 20 years one time i got a ticket and the other time i didn't and both times i could tell the guy who gave me the ticket in the first place hated my morning show at kq and uh -huh. the guy who didn't give me the ticket loved the morning show at kq <laughs> it was all based on that morning show i got well, a ticket because i hosted that horrible show that he hated it ain't going to help you if a computer catches you because if no, a right. does it, like you <laughs> yeah. get the, yeah. exactly. there's no, there's no sweet talking. There's no like looking for the cop sitting on the side of the road. Right. And just, it, it's the cameras are everywhere and they'll get you. So how many are there of those and how are we going to pay for that? I, I, it's just, it was something that was done in Minneapolis a number of years ago for a right. while. But I remember then that. They, yep. they stopped doing it. Um, there was a lot of disputable tickets and it, it, I got the sense it wasn't worth the time and trouble that for mm -hmm. them to go through it. Um, but the legislature in this last session uh, approved a, a, like a committee or a working group to store, to study it, which basically means they're considering it again. Mm -hmm. And because the technology is gone, it's developed a certain amount since when they had them in place in Minneapolis, they're better, they're more accurate. They're also trying to figure out the appeals process and how that would work. So, I mean, nothing's solidified yet, but it's definitely going to be something that's on the radar screen. I just, so it's all about money. This is not about law enforcement. This is about money. Yeah. That's I mean, disgusting. I, I, I don't, you know, I don't know the answer to that, but. Do we need much stronger leadership in this country? And I'm talking about both parties. Here's an example. Here's a, a matter of fact, this just popped up. Yeah. Re Republican revolt brings House to a standstill. What, why don't we serve the people there? What, what do you think? Why don't we serve the people who pay your salary, who pay all the bills, and because you don't agree with your leader, you're going to have a Republican revolt now. The Democrats do it, the Republicans do it, and we have to pay for all of it. It's disgusting. Wouldn't you agree? It's yeah, well, it's that budget deal that, that yeah. no one, nobody was happy, or debt ceiling deal. Uh, debt ceiling, uh, yeah. You yeah. know, it's said a billion times nobody was happy with what came out of it. And, um, you know, I guess now that they're really getting through some of the fine print, there's a lot of detail there that um, some of the conservative Republicans are, are really, you know, taking issue with, and they feel like McCarthy folded and gave in. And so, yeah, there's... How about this? I don't like the fact that we're $32 trillion in debt because of the same people that are bitching about this. You people need to get your head out of your ass and do your job. $32 trillion. In, are we ever going to recover from that? Can we? Uh, how? I don't yeah. see how. 
I have such a hard time believing anybody when they talk about this trillion dollars of federal debt, and then and then every state has a surplus of like seventeen yeah. billion dollars. I'm like, yeah. how is this yeah. possible? Well, they had to spend that on other things, or we couldn't have that back either. Oh, man. You know, your property taxes are through the goddamn roof right now. They are. Uh, they're taking more and more of our cash, and then all of a sudden you hear, oh, by the way, they're going to install red light cameras <laughs> so that you get more money taken away from you. Oh. You bastards, knock it off. The other day we got an alert from some Eden Prairie group or whatever. It's like, don't okay. worry. We bought four more drones, and we're like, "What? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're gonna why? You, pull you over in a drone? We've got like a horde of drones just hovering somewhere in Eden Prairie. Like, what is? What are they doing? Do you think the people ever will come together and stand up and go, look, Republicans, Democrats, Mayor, President, whoever you are, shut the hell up and support the people. Do your job for once. Have they ever done their? Did George Washington do his job as president? I don't even know. Well, I don't know, but there wasn't Twitter and Facebook no. and everything else to bitch about it back <laughs> yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. You just sat point. around drinking some ale around the old uh, ye old campfire and was bitched about the president at that time. Yeah, the problem is they do it the wrong way because when like the people get together and try it, that's what January sixth happens. It's like you yeah. guys had no plan at all whatsoever. So if we had some people like I don't know, let's get some autistic kids who could probably plan this out. And then we can all come together and then figure out a way to do it properly instead of just, you know, throwing paint up against the wall and being like, well, something's going to eventually stick. I still love that. And again, I, they should never have. And I said it, I was very, very clear on January 6th. They should have never done what they did. But I love how they call that the Capitol riot. But burning the entire country down was unrest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You people are so phony. It's yeah. unbelievable. That's, hey, listen, that is called democracy. Yes, yeah, democracy to democracy. burn your city down. <laughs> but when you do it at the Capitol, all of a sudden it's an insurrection. Okay. Well, they took my personal stuff. Now you got to go to jail. Yeah. Look, don't be doing that. How about that? Let's not charge the Capitol. Let's not burn down every damn place uh, in the United States. I, I, I'm telling you, because I spent so much time in that neighborhood, because I the Stanley family, I met, uh, met them, went to Brown Institute down there on Lake Street. When I go down Lake Street now, I literally tear up. Because I love Lake Street when I was a kid, teenager, young man, all the rest of it. Those buildings, beautiful architecture, just destroyed. And nobody ever talks about that. They should be talking about burning the Capitol, you know, trying to burn the Capitol, or, you know, the riot at the Capitol. They should absolutely be talking about that. But why don't they talk about the other things that other people did? I don't get it. Do yeah, you, you mm -hmm. can look around all. I mean, you look around Lake Street's one example. Oh, you, look in, you can look around all around the city, and it, it's there's still, you know, lots of scars left. That's for sure. There are indeed, and it's all because of cult behavior. I said it before, and I'll say it again. It's all cult bullshit now. All of it. Yeah, well, luckily the government will be making so much money off those red light cameras they install. <laughs> exactly. They can freaking rebuild everything <laughs> out of Wait, your pocket. I thought I thought they were going to pay for U.S. Bank Stadium first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got to go, baby boy. All right, you guys. Have a good. Oh, it's not a weekend. Have a good rest of your I day. I thought it was Friday today, too, I Chris. I don't well, know every why. Every day is a Friday when you love your job as much as I do. Yeah. True that. True that. Ah, also, touchdown. great looking shirt today, Chris. Yeah, Thank you. Did you, mm -hmm. you get that from Gilligan? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, pal. Right. We'll talk she to you tomorrow. Good, we got to take a break. Be right back in a couple minutes, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just now approaching the end of my 60 day weight loss program with MNFatLoss.com. I've lost over 25 pounds. 26 is over 25. I don't know if you know that or not. Mm -hmm. I feel fantastic, too. That's why I'm in such a good mood. You know what I mean? Exactly. Getting around's a lot easier. My clothes fit better, and there just really isn't a downside to losing the weight. You know that. Now I'll be going to the maintenance phase of the MNFatLoss.com program, adding in a few more food choices to the mix. That's all you do. I've loved the program so much that I'm planning to go back to the weight loss program. Uh, I plan on losing another 25 or so because I want to get down eh, probably around 215, 220, something like that, which is pretty damn low for me. You'll absolutely be able to lose weight like I've done and still enjoy the foods you love this summer, and that part is absolutely true, by the way. If you want to find out the secret to losing 20 to 30 pounds in just eight weeks, just like I'm doing, and I did, that's about a pound of fat every day, as a matter of fact. No exercise required. To schedule your free consultation, go to mnfatloss.com. That is mnfatloss.com. Results may vary. Be sure to tell the team at mnfatloss.com that Tom Bernard sent you.
The new Tom Bernard Morning Show is proud to have partners like Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and North American Banking Company founder, chairman, and president, Mike Bilski. I've advertised on Tom's show for years, and the reason is simple. My business is recognized because of the ads, and that recognition has created growth. What business doesn't want to grow? I highly recommend the Tom Bernard Morning Show for your advertising. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com, keyword partner. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that Bob's Burgers actor. I don't know. Do you know who that is? They, they're talking about Bob's Burgers actor arrested on Capitol riot charges. Oh, really? Who the hell is that now? Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm a big fan of the show, but I'm not sure who that is. Look it up. I have no idea who that is because I can't really see his. They got a picture of him on Newser. Uh, God, it's so funny. You look at the news now, and it's literally Biden, Biden, Trump. Um, Pence, um, you got McCarthy. Every story is about a politician. That's all we're talking about. Well, Pat Robertson died. That part's in there. And Fox, uh, Jamie Foxx is blind. So is he permanently blind? Does anybody know? I don't know. I looked into it, and everything I see looks like that... Um, he says that he. they really made it straight that a representative said that the set the record straight that it was not from the COVID-19 va- right, vaccine. Right. So that seems to be leading the headlines with that today. So does that mean he actually is blind though? I don't know. They said it didn't come from that, but is he actually blind? Because it doesn't, maybe I'll click on it and see if there's a any representative for Jamie Foxx told NBC News that the recent conspiracies connected to the recent hospitalizations about COVID-19 uh, <laughs> because of your stems. Uh, a blood who said that developed the blood clot after receiving. Okay, I'm not seeing where they're. I don't know if they're really telling him what happened or if he is blind. Yeah, I don't. I can't find it. I try to find. Is he blind or not? Well, I think they're really trying to keep it close to the vest. Yeah. They don't want to put out too much information because I don't think they know exactly. But oh, usually, maybe. Usually by now, if it was a stroke, that they could come out with something that was like, hey, this is what happened. But they have said nothing about this. No. And, and he continues to be in a facility, which is also a really bad sign that yeah. it's been going yep. on this long. So, yep. yeah. Yeah, and, and Rudy's just spot on. They're, they won't even say what it is. They say right. medical complication. Or they'll say uh, they're not even admitting that he's paralyzed and blind. That was like leaked, and their the medical actual information is really scarce about what what it is. Yeah, it's it's really too bad. He's a pretty damn good actor, I think. Anyway, great, one of the best. Uh, what are you, Mister Colorful? Now comes in as this colorful shirt, gal fan, looking all fashionable. Yeah, well, for me. No, that's a plenty <laughs> nice shirt. Where'd you get that? Uh, probably, uh, I'm, I'm guessing it's probably from the, uh, from the Target Fall Collection. Because mm-hmm. you're the only Jew I've ever met that wears a lumberjack shirt. Oh, you should tell him about the list of delis. He's going to be pissed. Oh, Galfin, you're not going to like this. No. Nope. I'm going to tell you. Uh, I think I know where you're going. They released a list of the favorite delis in Minnesota. Did you see it? <laughs> I, 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 I've been Mike. laughing for the last 15 minutes. Mike. I, I saw it. Well, those are delis? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I, I thought that was wonderful. Yeah, there's four uh, delis. Uh, there's never been a Jew in any of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's like being on the West Bank on a, on a Friday night, you know. They're all yeah. gone. They're, they're somewhere else. Uh, no, I, I, I mean, I, I have no argument that they're good places. That's fine. Yeah. They are. They're good places. I've eaten at a couple of them, and I really enjoyed them. But how do you ignore Crossroads and Cecil's? Well, that's the thing. I figured like, Cecil's what? would be number one. But that's it's, what I thought. Crossroads, a, you know, Crossroads is a very good place. Absolutely it is. Yeah. I thought it'd be one and two. Yeah, that's what I would have thought. I, that's what I, you know, I got nothing against Kramarchik's. No, it's great. It's, it's great. No doubt about it. Yep. Marty's, I've never eaten at Marty's Dell. I got to get over there. Well, that was what, where was that? Was that the one in Brooklyn Center? Northeast. Northeast. Okay, Northeast. Cause, because I know that um, Emily's, the Lebanese place, uh, That's you know, good. It's, yeah, it's yep. a little corner place it in the is. Northeast, and, it's, and I've eaten there. Yeah, it's nice. Used to be a big listener to the KQ Morning Show. Yeah? She was, yeah. I wasn't aware of that. No, she was a huge listener. Yeah, I've eaten there many times. <clears throat> oh, I thought, but to leave off Cecil's and Crossroads, <laughs> I, how? It's so funny because I opened that up this morning, and I was like, oh, I'll find Cecil's on this list. That was the first thing I was going to go look. <laughs> and when it didn't have it, I was like, oh, Tom and Gelfand are going to be pissed. You know, one, pissed. one thing I've noticed about the Strib 
Uh, it's not the sort of thing I look for. It actually isn't, but I, I don't think the I don't think there's a brother working there. One of my brothers. Yeah, the, the, the brother with a J. I think they're totally ethnically cleansed. I hope. Oh. I'm, I hope I'm wrong about that. I hope you're wrong about that too. That could be a very nasty outcome. Yeah, because you know, I mean, uh, if you look at good newspapers, generally there's a there's a few brothers there. Look, let me tell you something. You take out food from Cecil's or Crossroads and don't tell me that, first of all, if you eat their matzo ball soup alone, mm. that, if that's all I ever got, I'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's phenomenal. And to not even make the list, it just, and it does, it, look, it's based on the one writer's opinion. Yeah. But I don't really understand how you wouldn't know about Crossroads and Cecil's. It's, I mean, that's the standard. And like, that's it the, is, yeah. I was telling Tom earlier, the first time I ever went was with you. You were like, all right, yep. we got to go to this place. This is where you have to go. This is the standard. And that's always been that for me. And of course there is video. It may be, you may be able to find it on YouTube. Uh, you know where I'm going with this. Of course. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Of, you know of Brittany, know. Of Brittany uh, uh, enjoying her first delicatessen, true delicatessen yeah. meal. Was that at your house? No, that was at, uh, what was the name of the place? Mort's, Mort's. Mort's Deli, yeah, Mort's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. No, it's yeah, Mort's used now, to, yeah. you know, they used to advertise. <laughs> There's a lot yeah. of video and, and so over we did, and over. <laughs> so we did a video. We went over to Mort's uh, but since they were sponsors, and uh, <laughs> and I did sort of a, I, I guess it was a tutorial on uh, yeah. on how uh, how your Gentiles could enjoy uh, delicatessen food. And Brittany, of course, you know, she was great because this was, I think, Brittany hadn't had a lot of experience eating uh, delicatessen food. <laughs> oh, Shocking. what? And, Shocking. And watching her eat was, I mean, for me, you know, like sort of a, a, a father figure, you know. Mm -hmm. it, was, it just warmed my heart to see her enjoying that food. Oh, I understand that. Now, I saved this specifically for you. Mm -hmm. I've been waiting to get to it for two hours almost now, but I saved it. i got to wait till Gelfano gets here. You know that some guy thought his name was M. Howard Gelfano, didn't you? No. That was like my first byline at the <laughs> Minneapolis Tribune. <laughs> mm -hmm. McHoward M Gelfano. McHoward <laughs> Gelfano, that's what it was. It. Yeah. McHoward Gelfano. Sounds about right. I love that so much. <laughs> Mc, I, I wish I saved that. You know, right? by, yeah. You ever met a McHoward? Because I haven't. Uh, no, I think they're in a very small <laughs> supply there. I think you'd have to go to uh, all continents to, maybe, to maybe search Scotland. for one. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and the, the thing is, like, if, if I look on, you know, one of those uh, ancestry type type uh, yes. sites, yes. you know, and I look and it's like, uh, it's like, you know, uh, well, a grandfather from Russia, great grandfather from Russia, great, great grandfather from Russia. Mm -hmm. I don't need any more than that. No, you're right. Yeah, because you everybody does that and they're thinking, oh, God, I wonder, you know, maybe I'm a, like, a, uh, I can trace back to an Ethiopian prince, you know, that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, they always think you're that. Right. Yeah, they I do. got nothing like that. <clears throat> no, I yeah, now everybody it. is one thirty second Indian, of course. We know that. Well, yeah, we know that yeah. now, especially if they're running for office. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> then they that. definitely are. Okay, there are seven comments about this article that appears in the Star Tribune about the top delis in the Twin Cities. They do not mention Crossroads or Cecil's. We think that's a massive mistake. What do you, I have not seen the comments yet. Do you think they'll be positive or negative? Um, well, most comments, I think, are negative. Yes, most of them are. But in this case... Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I have no idea. No, I don't know if there'll be... A, I'd like to think that the Anti-Defamation League would come. <laughs> come on, <and> take <laughs> But they over. probably won't. Okay, here we go. First comment says, this is from Let Me Tell You. <laughs> Let me tell you. Northeast Minneapolis is well represented here. Northeast Minneapolis, the home of the Jew, as they say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No question well, about it. Maybe a few Jewish policemen. Yeah, that's about, that'd be about it. Uh, MN Viewer, you write a column on delis in the Twin Cities and omit Cecil's in St. Paul, perhaps the only real New York-style deli in these parts. Such a glaring miss calls into question your gastronomic credentials. Right on. Dang. And whether any of your recommendations merit a visit at all. <laughs> I Dang. love MN Viewer. Yes. Uh, fast speed. I love that most of these are in Northeast Minneapolis. Uh, Joanne 0402. Emily's was one of the first places I dined when I moved here in the late 1970s. It was always my first stop every time I visited the Twin Cities while I was away for nearly 30 years. It's still my favorite. Oh, yeah, I love Emily's. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Uh, C. Well Joe. Crossroads Delicatessen is also delicious. See, our yeah. choices come up with the people. Yeah. 
Uh, Crossroads Delicatessen is also delicious. 2795 Hedberg Drive, Minnetonka, off Hopkins Crossroad and Cedar Lake Road. I love the wild rice casserole and the strawberry chicken salad. He picked the two least <laughs> Jewish things to eat. That's exactly what I was That's thinking. That's hilarious. <laughs> like, these, they're no, not... Ma- no mention of corned beef or matzo ball soup. <laughs> I always get the, the, the big bowl of matzo ball soup there. And it closes with uh, two things. Skip mock says, what? No Cecil's. And Blager Blah says, one word, Cecil's. Yep. So Crossroads and Cecil's do come up several times. Yeah. And they should. Get the Anti-Defamation League on this one. Come I on. agree. I agree. There's I hope no they'll put out a it. statement this afternoon. No doubt about it. They should put out a statement. Yeah, You're absolutely. absolutely right. So I'm glad to see that you had, you agree with the situation that these these uh, horrible human beings. No, I, I looked at the headline and I thought, you know, this is going to be fun. It's the first thing I looked at when I got up today. Okay, the guy who wrote the article's name is John Cheng. John, <laughs> probably not a, one of my brothers. No, probably not. Yeah, probably not a Jew. That's no, probably true. No. I mean, not not that you have to be one. I, I'm just thinking maybe somewhere. You know, I was going to say in the building, but of course, no one's in the building itself. You know, what's so great. Mike Gelfand names the best Asian restaurants in Minnesota. <laughs> well, but no. although Jews love yes. Asian food, yeah, that's absolutely. the problem. Yeah. Number one, P.F. Chang's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do actually like P.F. Chang's. Those lettuce wraps are really good. Sure. Well, you got to, I mean, the, the walk in the park. That's, yeah, walk in the walk park. Walk in the park is so uh, that's, good. That is number one for me. Nobody will ever top Nankin, though. Well, no. That, that was that a Nan- culture. Owned by Jews, by the way. Yes, Golden family. The Golden family. You know, my friend Dick Golden. Sure. Uh, that was, um, I that, love that was his Golden. uncle who, who ran the place. Dick. I just saw Richard about two weeks ago. I love that guy. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. God, I, I think the world to him. Great <laughs> Isn't guy. he something? Yep, wonderful guy. And, and Dick's father, uh, who I was very familiar with because his father uh, had the uh, the scrapyard, the auto scrapyard. Yeah, yep, I remember that. Yeah, you know, down in the uh, the uh, Poison Well site. Well, yeah, uh, Washington Avenue, right? Well, no, this one was in, in St. Louis Park. Oh, it was in St. Louis Golden, Park. Golden Auto. Oh, over by the ballpark. Y- yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, I know what you're talking about. And I'd, I'd go over there, like, you know, I'd, I, always had, uh, I always had to drive my dad's uh, hand-me-down cars. And, of course, in those days, they were all crap. Sure. So I'd say, oh man, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd go over to my uh, to my local uh, mechanic, just down this, just a couple blocks away, and I'd say, uh, what's going on here? And he'd say, oh, that's the alternator. And I'd say, oh man, how much is that going to cost? He'd say, well, you know, it's going to cost three hundred ninety nine dollars plus labor. But he said, you don't, I mean, that car, that car isn't going to make it another <laughs> five thousand miles. And, you know, you know, he, Let he, it go. He said, you know, so I just go over to go over to Golden Auto. So I'd go over to Golden Auto, and yep. I'd, I'd tell uh, Dick's dad, I'd say, uh, I need an alternator for my, you know, 1962 Chevy. Sure. And he'd say, well, let me see what we got. And he'd disappear into the scrapyard, you know. And he'd come back about five minutes later, panting with grease all over his hands God, and his face. It. And he'd say, yeah, this, this should do the job. And he said, uh, it, looks, uh, it looks like it'll last for a while. And I'd say, great. Yeah, I'd say, how much? How much does it cost? And he'd say, um, uh, you know, six dollars and thirty cents. You know, From like, four hundred down to <laughs> six bucks. Yeah, okay. and there was no blue book or anything. You I know? love it. So I'd give him the six dollars and thirty cents cash only. You're making me sad because <laughs> I'm looking back on Washington Avenue, Broadway. Yeah. Oh God, I love that. Great memories. Those scrapyards down there, the auto parts stores. Those scrap, one of the scrapyards is still there, I think. I think it is. Well, that's the one that's right across from where Irv's used to be. Correct. That's so exactly yeah, so right. you know, when, whenever I did the remotes from Irv's at uh, at 8 a.m. when they opened, there'd always be guys coming over from the scrapyard. They had just brought in a bunch of scrap. You yep. Know? yep. And so they got a they got a check for you know like a seventy dollars and forty cents. That Irv's would cash the check. They'd cash the check there. And, uh, you know, the guys would uh, spend a happy day there and then st- probably stumble into the n- nearest uh, motel. Sure. Spend the night. You know, it's a night on the town for these guys. When I think of the food of the Jews, mm. I think of Judd Zolgad. That's who I oh, think he's of. Oh, he's definitely. I don't think there's any question about it. Well, Judd, you... Judd probably can't eat a lot of this, this food anymore now that he's dropped 40 pounds. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's good point. Did you say the Nankin, Tom Bernard? Did I oh, hear I that? I love the Nankin. Uh, 
Do you, do you did you guys partake in the Wanderers oh, punch oh back my. in your Wilder days? <laughs> we, we oh, just, yeah. Weren't we talking about that the yeah, other day? We were. Yeah, yeah, we were just talking about Wanderers punch the other day. Yeah. Yeah, how many of those I did you enjoy? This. Oh, over a period of time, quite a few. Yeah. But n- never more than one, I think, per sitting, because once you had one, you didn't need more. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, they you could share and still get plenty buzzed. I just love that. But you know, I just gave me these great memories going up there with Alan Dorfman, my old attorney. Sure. No longer with us. There's a no a woman. Nice Jewish woman, nice lady. She looked like about 80. And she goes, I asked for a schmear. <laughs> You're not going to hear that anymore. No. You're not going to hear that anymore. No. I love that so much. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I, used, to, I used to buy a few bagels occasionally at the love, Lincoln oh, Dell. Oh, God, yeah. And, but it was starting to go downhill pretty fast. And I went in one day. It was like, you know, 6, six o'clock at night. And I said, yeah, I need uh, six, six water bagels. She said, well, we're out of bagels. I said, wait a minute, this is a delicatessen. <laughs> this is a deli. <laughs> you, you, this is a Lincoln Dell. You can't be out of bagels. It's like a hospital being out of stitches, you know. <laughs> That's right. uh, how can this be? <laughs> and then I knew it was only a matter of time. Oh, I miss the Lincoln Dell so much, honest to God. So, um, Judd, I got to ask you, uh, I, I, I assume you're as excited as I am about baseball now that we've seen the probably the greatest player of many generations. Uh, who would that be? That's uh, Ellie De La Cruz. Oh, I did see that home run last night for the Reds. Holy! This this guy. Nike. Oh my God, Tom! You you got to see this guy. He's I I did see it. Tw- yeah, twenty one years old. <laughs> he's twenty one years old, and he's probably the fastest player in baseball. Yeah. He throws the ball harder. He's a shortstop, harder than any player in baseball. He's like six foot five and weighs about one hundred and fifty pounds, and his power is amazing. He's he. And and then they said yesterday he went he he hit a triple. Now, I don't even think this is possible. But they mm-hmm. said he made it to third base in less than eleven seconds. Is that possible? I don't know about that. I I, I don't know. You That's saw that three job. seconds to get to one, two. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't know. No, I mean, way. how could that be done? No way. But I will say nope. this: he is like um, he's like Mickey Mantle on steroids, or to put it another way. He's like Barry Bonds, not on steroids. <laughs> Although a hundred yard dash is ten, what ten said ten. Uh, it's there's an off chance it's possible. It's an off chance, but you're you're circling. It's not a straight well, line. Well, that's as the running. thing. Yeah, right. you're right. circling, so that that would add to the time. At any rate, he he has a chance. I mean, he's he's the only player I've ever seen hit. The, he just bat like six times. I've seen the videos and say Hall of Famer. Is it true? Because I I saw some video and I didn't have the volume up. But now they're claiming that somebody hit the very first 500-foot home run to dead center field this week. Who was that? I don't. I can't. I can't remember who because I didn't have the volume up. I don't. But is that even true? Do you hear anything about that? I didn't hear a thing about that. I but... saw the ball going. It looked like it left the ballpark, wait, but that wait. happened before. So teams are allowed to score runs. <laughs> <laughs> I love. Hold that. on a second. This is breaking news. <laughs> what a horrible team this is turning uh... into. Hey, I had so 500. much hope. We said from the start they were a 500 I know, team. but I had so much more hope for this team, and it's the same old we can't hit, we yeah. can't pitch, we yeah. can't do this. Five runs in the last five games. That's the I thing. Know. And, and again, horrible. last night, did, Tampa Bay started oh. and started what one of these you know openers last night, right? I mean, yeah. some guy like off the IL, he pitches an inning or two, and then they bring in another guy. I I dare you to pull up a box score of last night's game and tell me that you know the first name of any of those Rays pitchers because I sure as hell don't. Yeah. And yeah. the Twins scored one run and it was in the ninth. Yep. Yeah, and they should have. And they, they loaded the bases. <clears throat> there was one out. And you, you see that I with know. the Twins and you say, well, that's the end of the inning. Yep. Yep. And it's true. They've done it How over do you not and fire over again. the hitting coach? That's my – how do you not do something? Yeah. I got to be honest with you. I'm getting really, really – on thin ice with Rocco nothing ever changes they have no middle relief they can't hit yeah. they they like Gelf, Gel, Mick Howard Gelfano just said uh, you got the bases loaded with nobody out got the bases loaded with one out you got no chance they never score runs from that situation no I don't get it I, Jesus but Wait, Max Kepler it, is still there I yeah, know 
And he's still playing. Why is he playing? playing? What are we doing here? DFA him. Get rid of him. It's over. He had one good year, and it turned out the ball was juiced beyond belief. Was he hitting 192 or something? Yeah. I don't even think it's that high, is it? uh, Well, he he got a hit yesterday. Oh, did he? Yeah, it was like a hanging hanging slider. Oh, okay. (laughs) Congratulations, Max. What's what's Correa at now, too? I mean, uh, my God, he looks lost at the plate. How does a guy making $35, $36 million a year look like he has no freaking clue up there? And if he's still, if this foot thing's a problem, put him on the IL. Yep. Well, uh, it's probably a chronic problem, though. You know why I mean? did we and ever that's bring why him no back. one else wanted him. Why did why did we bring him back? Because we, we had him and then yep. he went to some other couple of teams. Well, yeah, we had him and then, you know, he <sighs> he, he was on the free market and, yep. but it turned out no one wanted him because they uh they looked at the X rays and the MRIs and they yep. said, Yeah, we'll pass. Why did we take him back? I don't get it. He's not doing anything. Our Maybe. doctors our doctors, Tom, said he'll be absolutely fine. I'm not kidding either. Yes. This is the thing is the oh Twins doc, I'd love to know who the, these uh. guys are because they have traded for more pitchers who are damaged goods. <laughs> oh, yeah. Correa true. comes back and it's like, well, what the Mets and Giants doctor said, that's not accurate. Well, we oh. remember, Tom and I remember when the team doctor was Harvey O'Fallon. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that his name? I believe it was. Like, yes. Yeah. That, that yeah. was his name. I remember the name. I believe so. And, and, you know, you'd see this story almost every summer. Well, well, uh, Tony Oliva had knee surgery, and uh, it's, uh, it, was, it was successful. He had successful knee injury like eight times. Right? Surgery, Which yeah. seems to be a contradiction in terms of Yeah, I of, would have to agree yeah. with you on that one. And he could barely walk after about the fourth. But not that it was the doctor's fault. It was just technology then was not what it's like today. Somebody just I want, a... the, I want the press release to come out one day that says so and so had surgery unsuccessful. <laughs> I know. Yeah, there you Un- go. It w- it did not go well. In fact, it went terrible. Career probably done, but he will live. That's what I want. I got a text message just now from a listener asking or telling me, not asking me, but telling me, is it true Arise is hitting five hundred? I no, know. he's four four oh two, I think, right now. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. So he's hitting four hundred, so that's still pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and it so was my... still a good trade though. Was it? Well, yeah, because I mean, well, look at the way Lopez pitched yesterday. Yeah, that's true. Lopez is a hell of a good pitcher. But not as good as he was. Probably not. Yeah, so there you the go. The question too is this though. So if if he if he was here. Number one, would the Twins not screw him up? I don't think that they would, but it's a question. The second question is this. He is great at getting on base. So who on this godforsaken roster knocks him in? Yeah. I know. You know, he gets the first base and what, hangs out there until the inning comes to an end? I got to say this. I mean, it's true, but I got to second base more often in junior high school. Oh, uh, what do you uh, think of that action, is. ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> I'm just saying that's how bad it is for him. No, no, he's, I mean, he's an exciting player, and he's going to put a lot of fans in the stands in Miami. So it was great for them. It was great for them, yeah. I was one of them. We went, Catherine and I went to a game at Miami, oh, yeah. uh, one of the first games of the year. And it's even better now that he can't do his, uh, you know, his th- Three three sixty walk around home plate or, after every pitch. <laughs> exactly, he can't do that. It turns out he that's doesn't true, need Mike. to do that. <laughs> He's better without it, Mike. Uh, he is, yeah. You know, that's the first thing that Mike brought up to me with that new pitch clock, or you know, hitting clock. He yeah. said he'll never be able to circle the plate again. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's, that's. I hope that rule was put in just for him. I, I agree. You're absolutely right. I so I watched a bit of the game last night, and you know, Catherine came. I I actually had to leave in the seventh inning. I believe the Twins were down one to nothing in the seventh. Correct? Yeah. Yes. And then I got back, uh, and the game was over, and they lost two to one. <laughs> so you know, I'm like, Gee, can you hit at all anymore? At least we know now you're not the curse. That's true. Mm-hmm. See, that's, a, that's a good. That's very good. I uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you don't have to uh, turn the bobbleheads around anymore. Oh, Mike, you're, that, that was 40 years ago. You know? <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday. That was 40 years ago. Here, here you go, Mike. Here's the Buxton one. <laughs> but I, I suppose that's not doing much good since he is oh, always injured. He's always injured. Yeah, I forgot about him for a moment. 
Well, that's a good sign. It's not that hard to do. This probably is. I think it's best that we try to put those things behind us. Well, they took him off the field because he didn't want him to get hurt. He got hurt anyway. Well, yeah, who thought that was? Well, I think what they ought to do with Buxton is make a first baseman out of him. Yeah, I think you're right. And then you can, you know, right. because this is a team that's full of DHs. Mm -hmm. So you put another DH in the game. I would agree with you 100% on that. We do have to take a break. We're right back. Judd's with us. Mike's with us. It's Tom Bernard here for the Power Lodge and the world's largest Bennington pontoon dealer, Miller Marine in St. Cloud. Temps are up. Prices are down. We just hit 88 degrees, so Miller Marine and Power Lodge are offering hot 88 summer deals for the next two weeks only. Get a Bennington pontoon at 28888 And as a bonus, the first eight pontoons come with a trailer for $1,888. Damn good deal. Finance it all for just 288 bucks a month. God, that's not bad, 288 a month. You want something larger? Get a Tritune, starting at just 43888 or just 488 a month. With over 300 pontoons in stock, they've got what you need at the world's largest Bennington dealer, Miller Marine and Power Lodge. Payment terms and credit limits are subject to credit approval, of course. So, come on. It's time to get serious about your throttle therapy with this two-week deal until June 17th. Check selection at PowerLodge.com and MillerMarine.com. Hot 88 summer deals with Bennington pontoons are on now. I'm now at the uh, Lodge and Miller Marine. All right, so you have been going to a lot of barbecues, a lot of uh, time to eat things that are not perfect for you. Do you find yourself gaining a lot of weight, Judd? I don't, and it's basically because uh, my experience with my friends from Livia Weight Control Centers, which goes back now a couple of years, at which, as Mike said earlier in the show, I dropped 40 pounds, has allowed me to keep that weight off. The dietitians and nutritionists there have done a marvelous job of helping me, and they will help you too. And here's the best part. If you join now, you're going to get eight weeks for free, and you could lose up to 15 pounds by the 4th of July. And that's only going to be a start because, again, you're going to take the weight off and, most importantly, keep it off, and you're going to get the first eight weeks for free. Um, you will be looking good, feeling good. All those clothes that might not fit in the drawer right now, well, guess what? They're going to fit. 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A, Livia.com. 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A, Livia.com. That is where your weight loss journey starts. I want to tell you something during that break. I was messing around a little bit. I was going yammer, yam. Yeah, yammer, you may yammer, have been yammer. mocking me a little bit. Uh, I will tell you, I've just had an experience I don't want any of you to have. Laughing and wild cherry diet Pepsi coming out your nose. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that, that burns a little. I wanted to be, I was so mad at you. So after I was done talking, I gave you the swiftest, hardest she look. Did. You almost have to go back to YouTube and like watch that. it. I just give you the swift mom look. You did. And then you almost spit diet Pepsi out <laughs> it, of your nose. It did it just, come out of my nose and it burned like hell. Well, you have earned that. It's your fault. You have earned that. You know, You're uh, a horrible person. Many years ago, I read about the, uh, the benefits of, of taking like cinnamon capsules. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll you know, give it a uh -oh. try. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. So I took one of those cinnamon capsules and uh and then like about an hour later it uh, kind of came back up. Oh yeah. And uh, oh. I thought my brain was on fire. Oh, Jesus. That's, that was really scary. What was the benefit? Yeah, what I, are the benefits? I don't remember anymore. It was probably had something to do with with blood pressure or or potency maybe. Do they, they still have those cinnamon challenges? The guys take tablespoons of cinnamon? Oh, that's crazy. I don't that's, think, I think man. you get one bite in and you're done. Yeah, like that's seems the big like it. thing. I've never done it and I'm never going to do it. So, Dougie's here. Dougie Sprinthal. Oh, my God. Wearing his flagship oh Ford doing, shirt. Man? Good to see you. What a man. You're not, you don't get any head. I'll get it. I'll get it. Here, he's out of the mix. <laughs> Flagship Ford in Baldwin, Wisconsin, ladies and gentlemen. Dougie's here. Dougie, We're talking. Sure now, so what? And we got we got Brittany's dog here too. Two, and Brittany's dog two is here. Two esteemed guests today. You're all set. You got. You, we're sitting down. Judd, have you ever met Doug Sprinthal? I have not. I've heard of Doug, but I've not met him. Doug Hello, Sprinthal. Judd. 
Hi, Doug. How are you? I am excellent. What a beautiful day. What a You're going to have to work that mic a little. Dog. You're going to have to I'm work sorry. that mic a little closer there, Buzz. We should just throw that mic into the river. Yeah, we I'm so tired should. of it. God damn it. Will you give Doug the other headphones? I'm so tired of that mic. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Spoken like a man. producer who has had his yeah. fill of that crappy yeah. mic. Yeah, the, the, the headphones that have the actual mic attached to them. Oh, okay. uh, Brittany, yeah, why don't you grab those, Doug? The other ones, yeah, that, that thing's garbage. Yeah, that mic, that mic is. Why is it? I don't know. If somebody set so it up, and, I know. And then the problem is, we move everybody around, and then we forget about it because we get busy with other things. And then somebody some, comes in, and we're like, "Oh yeah, forgot to totally change that thing over." So today, I will make a point that we do something with that microphone. Could you take my picture down and put Doug's up instead? No, let's not. Oh, this one isn't on at all. Oh, now it's not on at all. Hey, is Brittany over there? Can she turn that? She's there a disaster, go. let's Brittany. be honest. There you go. Oh, she got it all figured out. A little out. more preamp, and we're good. <laughs> she was just yelling at me about something. I forgot what it was. Oh, yeah, she made Pepsi come out my nose. <laughs> Hurt like a bitch. I feel bad because I love the production of the show, and I show up, and it just goes right in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> like you, and everything sounds great. It's really wonderful. I listen to the show all the time. It's only been 14 years now of you doing that to me, so well, I know. know. It all works out in the Oh, you got here just in time for the Mary Lou Henry interview coming up in eight minutes. I have a question for Rudy. Uh oh, yeah, question buddy. for Rudy. As a professional comedian, how do you compete with the following two headlines? Donald Trump goes after Chris Christie by telling fat jokes, <laughs> <laughs> and Jimmy Pesto gets arrested for January 6th. Uh, I oh, is that the Bob's the guy Burger from Bob's guy? Burgers. Yeah, yeah, Bob's Jimmy Burgers, Pesto. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just sell all my fat jokes to Trump. <laughs> yeah, there you that's go. That's how I do it. Exactly. <laughs> I think that's hysterical, actually. They, you know they I love, never though? go out of style. No. You know what I love about that, though? I've met Donald Trump. He's not exactly live oh, himself. Uh, well, yeah, I, that was no. my point. Yeah. It's like, like mm -hmm. go fat jokes. Pot to go down swinging, Tom. Go down swinging. That's the key to, to life. It doesn't matter what's wrong with you. Just pick on the other person and yeah, go down true. swinging. Oh, well, I tell you. Know you know I hate fat people. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. You got to... her again. No. Yeah, that's... baby. That's out of context. You're a horrible person. <laughs> Brittany I was doing is a horrible. Beat. I was the talking Donald about Trump beat. of St. Louis Park. <laughs> no. Arneson. Arneson. And she relies on that old stale excuse. Oh, I, I, it took me out of context. I don't know We've what I was doing. We've seen that too many times. <laughs> Oh, Dougie, you're up on camera, man. I know. It's awesome. I love it. I love looking at myself. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> no, nah, it's a good look. So everything's good. We got the cheerleader sitting over here. What does it feel like to be on the air with five guys? Feels um, like, it feels like the old days. Yeah, yeah I was going to be honest. I didn't even realize that until you said that. It's not exactly a lot of masculine energy coming up. Oh, <laughs> what she's, well. Oh, wow. she's, what she just said is if Lassman was here, it would be different. Yeah, it would be a different yeah. deal. Yeah. Lassie. She's right, though, about that. I mean, uh, I find myself now, like, uh, asking for directions you know, you? It's, it's it's what happens when you get old. Well, it's, I suppose it's, that's There's true. just the testosterone just, you know, it's not there depleted. anymore. Depleted. Yeah, it's depleted. Your, direct, your sense of direction just goes out the window. Yeah. I hate so you. So Judd and Doug should have a conversation because they've never worked together before. We were talking a lot about uh, th there's a guy playing baseball, Dela Cruz. And as Mike pointed out, there's about the 85 Dela Cruzes in baseball. Well, yeah, well, especially in horse racing. And horse racing, yeah, I mean, true. That's number right. of jockeys named Dela Cruz. That's of course, true. it means of the cross. Of the cross. Yeah. Uh, this guy can run like Hussein Bolt, twenty-eight really? miles an hour. He may, yeah, crap. he's that he's, is moving. <laughs> and and he, Man. he throws the. They said the other day they timed. You know, they can do all this stuff now. They timed his throw. He plays shortstop to first base, ninety-nine miles per hour. This guy's like science fiction. <laughs> wow. Jesus. It's like Sid Finch. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You yeah. remember the story of Sid Finch sure. by George Plimpton? It's yeah. Like Sid Finch. This is this guy's probably better than that. So, uh, did he steal a lot of bases? He must have. That's oh, like, oh, oh I would imagine. Yeah, he stole like I think he stole something like forty bases last year, and, and you know, not that many at bats, and that was in the minor leagues. Of yeah, course. amazing. But no, he can. I mean, he is. It's if you if you created a character like this, right? You know, it would be pretty much on the margins. People would not God. buy it. This guy's incredible. <laughs> He's got. This guy's gonna. He's going to be worth more money than the uh, Las Vegas baseball stadium that is they're he building. He's faster than Ricky Henderson. He's fat. They say he's faster than wow. just about everybody. Because Ricky made everybody look like they were standing in Jello. Yeah, right. That is you true. know they they compare him to to Ricky. Yeah. 
I never do this interrupting my coworkers, but uh, all of the true talent of Mary Lou Henner just <laughs> told you guys to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mary Lou, I told him. You didn't tell him. But how are you doing, Mary Lou? Doing Great talking. Nice one. <laughs> I'm the good cop. Yeah, yeah, you're the good. Yeah, that's right. You're the, I'm the bad cop. You're the good cop. Right. Aurora Tea Garden Mysteries. Something new, ladies and gentlemen. Friday, that is tomorrow, of course. Mary Lou, how have you been? Oh my gosh, I've been busier than I've ever been in my entire life, and it's all been great. I mean, you know, I've been doing Hallmark movies. I've been doing regular movies. Mm -hmm. My son's been doing a movie. He's got a big film. His first directorial debut. He's like in his twenties. He directed a feature. It's, and, and he did it as like a little tiny short on YouTube. People saw it. They said, can you do this as a movie? He said, yes. Can I direct it? They said, make a pitch. He did. And it went to Sundance. And I had nothing to do with any of this. And now it's opening festivals. And it's going to be in movie theaters July 14th. It's called Theater Camp. So check it out. My, his son, my son's name is Nick Lieberman. Nick so, Lieberman. Oh, I Lieberman. just got more, more impressed. Yeah. yeah. Great. That's really nice. <laughs> yeah, well, that's because his name is M. Howard Gelfand, so you know what I'm saying, Mary Lou. You know. No, I don't know what that means. Nice Jewish boy. I, I don't either. I've been oh. in therapy oh, for God. years, and I still Listen don't Listen to know. him. Oh, no. They come from a, you know, they, yeah. His real name is Muttel. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, Mary, Mary Lou, let's talk Aurora Tea Garden Mysteries, something new. What's it all about? Well, I, there was a series, there's been a series on the Hallmark Channel called the Aurora Tea Garden series. Mm -hmm, right. And this is the prequel to it. Um, you know, this is years before the regular series, and you see what she was like when she just got out of college and first became interested in solving crimes in her hometown. And I play her mom. So uh, it's, uh, and people who love the show will be able to uh, see little clues that will show up later on. You know what I mean? Like somebody like, oh, my gosh, that person's going to die in a future episode. Oh, that person, you know, because they've already seen the future. It's kind of back to the future in a way. So they'll be able to see what, what, where the seeds are planted for the regular series. So cool. I think it's, see, I love this kind of programming. In any, you know, i got to say one thing, Mary Lou, and please take this as a huge compliment. Okay. All right. I'm looking at your picture. Did you cut a deal with God or something? You don't look any older than you did in 1971, for Christ's sake. Well, seven, you mean 78 for taxi. No, but, gr Greece. No, oh, sorry, oh, Greece, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I was a few pounds. That was, uh, yeah, no, I... <laughs> A little bit, yeah. No, That's, you look great, though. You, I, oh, thank you. No, I, the, the deal I cut is I gave up dairy products, and dairy products changed, giving up dairy products changed my life. I always say, learn to love the food that loves you, and dairy did not love me. Okay, know? I have a question for you. How about ice cream? Okay. No, unless it's no? you know, plant-based. No. Uh, and that, oh, your breathing gets better when you give it up, your sleep, your, you don't snore, you don't stink you don't i mean it makes such a difference giving up dairy. my well, wife wouldn't I recognize me yeah. <laughs> Doug, you don't stink anymore what happened yeah where, where have you been who have you been with giving up dairy made a difference and i also say motion is the lotion motion is the lotion so you got to keep moving because people like sit on their butts all the time and yep. they shouldn't it's the worst you're absolutely right. Aurora Tea Garden is back home in Lawrenceton, post-college, yes. near her mother, Ada, played by Mary Lou Henner, working as a teacher's assistant in a crime fiction class. Aurora is struggling to settle on a thesis for her postgraduate degree to support her schooling and life. Aurora also waitresses at the local diner at night. And it does go on a bit from there, but it's a, I, I love that. It sounds good. Well, well, first of all, Mary Lou, if you're in it, I'll watch it. That's just oh, how it is. thank you. Well, it's true. Oh, thanks. No, it's pretty It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to revisit a character. And you see, my character is always, in the regular series, she was always, like, so in control and so imperious and so confident. And in this one, she's just gone through a divorce. She's kind of on shaky ground with her business. So it's kind of fun to play a more ver vulnerable version of what I will become in the other episodes. So yep. how many episodes do we have coming? Uh, we've done 18, and now this is... The 19th, but this is the, the first of the prequel, so we hope to do at least nine or ten of these. Oh, well, that's good. So that'll be fun. I know. It's so much fun. So, yeah. So we'll see what happens. You know, I hope everybody watches it. Please watch it because we do want to make more. 
Well, now that you've been on the show, I'm sure everybody who listens to the show yeah, will watch that's it. Right. <laughs> that's right. I don't think there's so, any question. How is Minneapolis doing? Minneapolis is doing pretty well. We were just talking about, uh, I, I really wish that we would get uh, control of some of the, uh, well, the downtown area is not as safe as it used to be, I guess. Mary mm. Lou is the best way to put it. And pretty much every city in America is like that now. I just Going through that, yeah. I just really I, wish people would calm down. That'd be nice. Yeah, for sure. And then maybe we can get something done so that it's not too warring sides all the time. Um, I love Minneapolis. I did Annie Get Your Gun there. Right. And I had so much fun. It's such a beautiful city. And, uh, and I was there for a summer because my then husband, my second husband, um, he was shooting Mighty Ducks 3 there. Oh, yeah. So matter- a real fondness for Minneapolis. Matter of fact, in, in, in many, many years ago, you came in. I, I was working at a place called KQ, KQRS Radio all, all those years ago. And you came in studio, and you were so nice. I will never forget oh, that. thank you. I was very impressed with you. Although you had a look on your face looking at me like, what the hell's this guy's deal? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe because I was pregnant at the time. No, there were two times that I was there. <laughs> I was there for a book signing, and I was there for Annie Get Your Gun. I was yeah. there for two book signings for Annie Get Your Gun, and I was there when I was pregnant, too. So I make a joke. acting as much fun as it as it's ever been has it changed a lot? I mean, you know, political climates do change acting, just like every other judge, like oh, doing sure. right, all of that sure. stuff. How's that going now? Um, well, you know, it, it, I think people are have just gotten a lot more sensitive to things. Yeah, and in some ways, it's been. I mean, it, it's we had to go in some direction like that because it was sometimes so inappropriate, and you just kind of roll your eyes and think, like, is that person really trying to get away with saying that? It's so obnoxious. You know, yeah. So, so it's, uh, but I, 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 you know, it's. Uh, I think people are very respectful, which is nice. Um, I hate to see comedians lose too much of a comedy edge. Yes, they're yeah. really funny, um, but not if they're really hurting people. You know, so you have to figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll we'll get find it all balance. done. Yeah, find the balance for sure. But yeah, I lo- love acting as much as I ever did. You're, you're always getting better and better and better, and, you know, I, I'm always trying to, uh, you know, my, my son is watching his movie, and he'll say, like, oh, I wish I could change that. I wish I could change that. I said, Nick, I feel that way about every taxi episode, every job I've ever done. <laughs> you know, you always feel like, oh, I want to go back and do it even better this time. But that means you care. That means you're passionate about it. That means you, you're a student of your own life and your craft, and you want to always make it better. You know, it's amazing about that. We were just talking about this by coincidence. Uh, uh, I guess it was about a week ago, but uh, you were included in this. I was talking about, you know, people looking at things kind of like the way you do. Uh, you came in studio. You were very pleasant, and I will never forget that. But I was talking about, you know, Peter Falk has been in, Jane Fonda has been in. All. The bigger a person, I don't really want to say star, but the better an actor a person is, you guys, when you get to the top, you're very, very pleasant to deal with, and I, I really enjoy that. I got to tell you that. Well, you know what? I think when you when younger kids are starting out in the business, they think they have to have an attitude because that's yeah. part of it, the mystique. And then you realize, no, no, just be a human being. That's what you're trying to play on camera anyway. All right, you know? so well, you got to go on tour for Aurora Tea Garden Mystery, something new. When you when you go on 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 tour, you got to come in the studio again okay. and see Uncle Tommy. Okay, Uncle Tommy. <laughs> oh, all right, Mary Lou, thank you. Tommy. My, my kids have an Uncle Tommy. My brother's name is Tommy. All right, then how about Uncle Timmy? I'll go with Timmy. <laughs> no, Uncle Tommy's fine. He can all right. be Uncle Tommy 2.0. I like it. Mary Lou, thanks for your time. Have a good thanks day. Thanks so much. Okay, bye. Bye. Mary Lou Henner. Very, very. Were you in studio when she was in studio? No, I wish I had. Stunningly beautiful woman. Oh, I mean, I, yeah, that I know. <laughs> there's no doubt. I remember about it, Taxi. Whoa. Yeah, Taxi was a great show. I wasn't a huge fan of the show, but I, I was always a fan of her. I understand exactly what you're saying. Some of the parts of that show were really good, and others were like, eh, that's too silly for me. Although I do have a mint condition Tony Danza show t shirt. You do? Yeah, because I, I watched the first, uh, maybe the first or second time it was on the air, and I said, this can't last more than a month. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I immediately well, bought, nice. I bought a sure. mug, a Tony Danza show mug, and T-shirt, because I figured they'd be collector's items someday. Are they? Uh, you know, I haven't checked lately. I, should, might. I should go might on be. eBay and check. So, Dougie, what's the latest with you? Well, um, we are going to do an episode of Car Selling Secrets here in about 
I don't know, really? 40 minutes or so. 40 yep. minutes, oh, yep. Wow. My new boss is coming <laughs> in studio. Gail all excited. He goes, oh, wow. No, not again. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Sorry, Mike. You can just What's sleep so through great? it like you always do. No, my new boss is coming in studio. He's super excited to meet the two of you. He's been a morning show fan since Christ was a corporal. Can I look up and go, what do you want? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Tee off on him. Give him a bunch of crap. He's a good guy, and he stuff. can take a punch. He's a large fellow, so you might want to do it. I want to be nice. Distance. Um, I took a trip last week because I tend to uh, – Doug and I have become really good friends over the years. It wasn't just a radio deal that, uh, that we just worked together and never spent any time together. Our family spent time together. We get together with other friends. We hang out with all the millionaire DJs in Switzerland. Wicka, yes. wicka, 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 yup. Yeah, all of them. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know, so when, <laughs> when Doug uh, left the other joint – um, I went over and because I turned my car back in because I support my friends. And I know a lot of people wouldn't do that, but that's not who I am. I went over, one of the best moves I've ever made, went over to Flagship Ford over in Baldwin, Wisconsin. By the way, from East St. Paul, it's about a 15-minute drive. Well, it's maybe not very, 20 or 25. I don't know. It's about, 15 miles from the St. Croix River, let's just say well, that. It's 15 yeah. minutes. But East St. Paul, you got to go through. Let's not play Twin Cities geography. <laughs> okay, we won't but do that. But we don't want to look down on our Woodbury and Maplewood friends, which you'd have to pass through. No, I understand that. No question about it. But I'm just telling you, it's not like with Wisconsin. It's not that far away. No. I mean, I had a very pleasant. I went over and bought a, uh, um, a Mustang all-electric vehicle, a Ford Mustang. The people over there could not have been nicer. Oh, by the way. So I, I understand my buddy was showing everybody how to download the podcast. Yeah, so that was wonderful. There's a guy there who's 60 and he's worked at the store a couple different times. Great he's guy. Just, his name's Jeff Freeze. Everybody calls him Freezer. Freezer, yeah. Uh, and he I, he finally figured out how to download the Tom Bernard podcast, and so he's taught all his 60 and 70 year old buddies. <laughs> nice. But the funniest Solid. thing that happened was. Love it. Tom's in the car with Freezer, and they're going through all the. You know, it's a complicated car, yeah. so you gotta. You don't just toss somebody the keys and go see a sport. Remember to give us fives on the survey. Um, so he's going through it, and these two other old guys show up. I had sold another dealer a used pickup truck, and they were coming to get it. And this guy comes up, and he goes, uh, "Hey." You know Jeff Freezer? And they said, yeah, he's here. Oh, bullshit. He hasn't worked here in years. And they said, well, he's in that car right there uh, talking to Tom Bernard. Now I know you're full of shit. <laughs> so I knock on the window, and the window goes down, and he goes, holy shit. And then he sees Tom, and he goes, what the fuck? <laughs> it was Jeff Freeze's brother. I see that. He didn't know where he worked. He I see that every week. Brother. Right? Every week, yeah. yeah. Every time he walks up here, he goes, no way. He's still here. There he is. <laughs> oh, God, he's back again. I do uh. want to say that Tom did weaponize his friendship uh, against me. I did. He said, you know, this is how good of a friend I am, Brittany. My friend switches dealership. I go and I buy a car from him. When have you done that? I go, never. I've never kept casually just been like you know what i never said when did uh, when did you you do said it? that's how i'm a good friend what have you done for your friends lately God, now i feel like i've got to do something I well she know. dressed up as a cheerleader when she heard the two of you were coming I, in. <laughs> what girl wouldn't exactly <laughs> exactly you know, would i thought no, see, i got it tom yeah. see i don't understand how you sit because i don't like the way you were treated I'm sorry, but I will never like the way you were treated. I know. And therefore, I would, wherever you went, I was going to follow you. And I'm glad I did because they're very, very nice people. Well, and, and I'll I tell you car. this. I didn't just sell you a car to sell you a car. I, you have bought some of the coolest stuff ever. I have owned great cars. The it's true. very first Teslas <laughs> sold in the U.S., a Cadillac ELR, which was a marketing fiasco for it Cadillac, was. but it a was, cool yeah. car. Great car. A triple black 5.0 Mustang convertible is a classic. Mm -hmm. The big black jag i mean you buy cool stuff and you appreciate it so. first we had uh, mary lou henner now this it's getting a little treacly around here treacly yeah okay that's the word of the week All right, okay treacly we're going with yeah. that okay rudy d can you spell that for us <laughs> no <laughs> no i cannot i think there's a d in there right <laughs> there's something in there yeah. no question but don't you think and i've been told by a number of people god nobody's like that 
that they just don't, people just don't do things like, well, I already got this or so whatever. You know, I don't like what happened to Doug, but I'll just ignore it. I'm not, I don't ignore things like that. You know what? I, I'm putting that behind me. I, I, I understand was sad that, that it happened, <clears throat> yep. but I'm having a blast. This yeah. is cool. And another three or four years, I'll be hanging up my salesman shoes. Isn't that funny when you get to a point where it's something that was a huge negative, almost one of you go, oh, that one the worst thing that happened to me, and it get to a point that it's a positive? Because you weren't going to leave a place like no, that. Because you're so loyal yeah. until somebody, you know, and I have been in situations like that where you go, <clears throat> this is the worst. And the moment you realize it's actually one of the best things that's happened to you. I learned that at a very young age. In 1970, I was just short of 12 years old, and two things happened that changed my world. The Beatles broke up, and my oh. parents got divorced. And oh, I'm like, God. okay, n all things must pass. You just got to learn how to deal with it and march forward. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's true. It, wa it wasn't that easy to do, especially the Beatles, the folks I got over with yeah. pretty quickly. <laughs> By the way, I did change one thing about myself, and I won't tell you what it is when you're here, but I can give you an indication that whenever I, you think of someone as a like a prick or an asshole, I call them a certain name now. Just a first name. And I can't tell you what, even what letter it starts with, but that's my new thing. If you're mean to me and I call you that name, it means I'm really pissed off at you. Because one of the biggest assholes I've ever met in my life. And my, now uh, as we move on... <laughs> I'll, we'll talk off the air. I've got some interesting <laughs> other every, stories. Everybody, another bridge burned mm -hmm. here on the oh, Tom no, Bernard no, podcast. No. My, my he wife burned has, that bridge. My wife me. has a similar name for women that do stupid things. She calls him Patty. She's like, nice move, Patty. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say Brittany. And no, the way no, you no, no, the no, eye, I was like, yeah. That's, that's the name for the asshole, actually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's exactly that. right. It's Brittany. I'm fine yeah. with that. I need oh, a little a bit of an edge to me. What a Brittany. I I have a... Uh, a neighbor mm -hmm. had a neighbor, and uh, he's. We found out you lived there and moved. He's well, <laughs> he, well. There goes the neighborhood. You there know that. Goes the so he was. He was actually. Uh, he, he was from uh, Hungary. Oh, okay. Came over here when he was about sixteen, and uh, so uh, he was a little league coach, and I was a little league coach, and I was just kind of getting used to the territory. So every time I would ask him about anyone, I'd say, "Hey, what about Wilson there? You know, what's he like?" He always said the same thing, which was. He is an asshole. <laughs> so, so was I related to him? So, so my kids picked up on that. Oh, sure. So then I'd say, hey, uh, I see you're playing with the fisher over there. What's he like? And my kids would say, he is an asshole. <laughs> nice. But, you know, not wrong, I'm sure. Yeah, what the yeah. hell? We have to take a break, do we not? Yes. We'll be right back and wrap this thing up right after this. This is the Tom Bernard Morning Show. There's a guy named Tom Cross who likes to do kite things. Tom takes the phrase, go fly a kite to an extreme, and for years goes all over the country in search of great kite flying events. Lincoln City, Oregon comes to mind with Chinook winds and seven miles of pristine beach that draws folks from all over North America for the best kite flying conditions in the world. Tom brings a little Minnesota with him when he goes to Lincoln City in his new Forest River RV Rockwood Rue, 19 expandable trailer, of course, that he hauls from Niemeyer Trailer Sales in Albertville and Elko New Market, Minnesota. Niemeyer Trailer Sales is the only place Tom would prepare his next kite flight. Solar panels, full bath, exterior griddle, double door refrigerator, queen beds, and sleeps six every night in the RV Rockwood from the place that is your family owned guide to RV trailers and truck accessories since 1965. This is Tom. Visit my friends at Niemeyer Trailer Sales and take your passion on the road. Niemeyer Trailer Sales. Go to N I E M E Y E R S dot com. Niemeyer trailer sale we are back ladies and gentlemen back on a on a day when i have to report we've lost both the iron Sheik and pat robertson man how do we wow. go on how are we gonna make however it? the good news is the pope had like three hours of surgery and they say he's just fine he's and amazingly wheelchair, henry kissinger is 100 years old didn't yeah. he turn 100 a week ago or so Did i he think really? he's still banging jill amazing. st john he might be who was the comedian that I, I was taking the Jill, Jill St. John out one night? Who was that that did that bit? <sighs> Pretended to be Kissinger. God, God it I was don't very, know. very funny. Sounds like a good really, bit, though. It was a great bit. It was very funny. Shecky Green? Might have been Shecky. <laughs> oh, remember the, the great Shecky Green story? I don't. Hmm. He's driving uh, down the uh, road in Las Vegas. He's had several cocktails. <laughs> he loses control going around that huge fountain. Goes right into the fountain. Drives his car right into the fountain. It's Caesars, right? It's Caesars. Yeah. That's exactly right. The cops come. He puts the window down, looks at the cop, and says, 
No hot wax. <laughs> <laughs> he was ready. Oh, well, he That's was the ready. Golden oh. era of drinking and driving, oh, right? Oh yeah. Well, nobody got hurt, thank God. Oh yeah, they just died. <laughs> no, why? I mean, in the Shecky Green. Well, deal, not, that, not that particular story. I want to be. Don't change my name to she- Shecky Bernard. What do you think? No. no. You know, they've spent millions of dollars marketing the show. I don't think you should change your name. The Shecky Show. I think it's got a ring to it. it does, doesn't it? Yeah. I might take it since your name's on everything. <laughs> what the hell's that look? I mean, like, in a, I just Shecky, acquired a name. Shecky Arneson? <laughs> that, goes, that goes together really well, I Why think. Why does that feel like, sound so offensive when you said it? <laughs> I just looked at you with a sneer. That was going to be my fourth kid. Shecky? <laughs> Shecky. You're going to go with Shecky. I yeah. like that. Well, you know, I went through, you know, I went through Jake and Max and Sam, so. Yeah, you took them all. And, you know, you can't name your fourth kid Lance after that. No, 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 it's not going to work. <laughs> That's true. You go with Shecky. Shecky would have been good. Yeah. I always did like Shecky Green on The Tonight Show, to be honest with you. I started watching The Tonight Show uh, from the very beginning a couple of days ago. Pretty interesting stuff, actually. You mean pre-Carson Car- era? or The whole Carson, the starting with yeah. the Carson era. Carson, I just watched yeah. an interview with Carson and Frank Zappa last night. I was just goofing around on YouTube. And going, yeah, well, that's exactly what it is, isn't well, it? What was the deal with Carson? Because obviously he was... Uh, he was a very, what, angry guy? Is that safe to say? I think he was a booze hound, to tell you the truth. Yeah. That's what I've heard. Yeah, I don't I've heard know. That. I never met him. But, uh, Louis, well, I can't ask Louis Anderson because he's dead now, too. Yeah. So never mind. But Carson was the best ever at that job. He was great. Yeah, he really anybody was. Great was, interviewer. Was ever better before him and has not been better after him. The three people they have now are dreadful. My God, those three nights, well, every one of them has t- terrible ratings now. Well, but they make a lot of money anyway because the shows are not that expensive to produce. Yeah, that's true. That's and true. I, I, what I like about the shows is basically the writers. Yeah. Well, Pat McCormick was his head writer, and you're not going to do better than Pat McCormick. Oh, yeah. There are a lot of Pat McCormick stories out there. Oh, there certainly are. 6'6", <laughs> six, six, about 350. Yeah. I biggest know. Irishman ever born. And the uh, the helicopter birthday ride. <laughs> the hel- <laughs> we, we can't even go into it. No, you can't go into that stuff, but it was but, damn good. But, you know, the, the, the writers for, for uh, especially, I think, I think uh, I don't know about Fallon. I don't, I don't watch him much. Um, no. But, uh, but I'll, watch, I'll, watch the, uh, I'll watch, you know, Jimmy Kimmel's monologue. Is it any good? I've never well, seen it. I, I mean, uh, I'm not an expert. Uh, Rudy might have something to say, but I think the jokes are pretty good. All right. I think he delivers other people's jokes very well. Yeah. Oh, so he yes. does other people's well, jokes? Well, no, that's, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, does he really? I think he's very good at it, yeah. Uh, and some of his stuff, because if you go back and watch The Man Show, that was prime Jimmy Kimmel, and it was so funny. And then all of a sudden, he just got super woke. It's like Harumbe, yeah. Harumbe got killed, and then he was crying on the TV, and it was like, is this the same guy that had women jumping on trampolines, trampolines. for exactly. four seasons? Like, Slamming what? beers. Yeah. What an awesome show that was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what happened to this guy? Win Ben Stein's money, he was terrible on that he show. He wasn't that great on that either, no. He was no. terrible on there. It's like... Oh, we'll go to this part now. Was he just had he just broken in or something? No, but I don't know. I feel like uh, his, his show is good, and I love him as the Oscars host. Bring him what back every year. Oh, he's so good. God, yeah. I haven't watched yeah. the Oscars since Christ was a corporal. But the <laughs> other thing to, to keep in mind is that if if you were if if your uh, if your girlfriend. Uh, significant other with Sarah Silverman, you'd be crying a lot, too. Yeah, probably. Because she's a very <laughs> depressed woman. I think she's fantastic. She's very funny and a beautiful woman. And Yeah, but she is a depressive, and, you know, yeah. as, as my... Uh, Wait a minute, a Jewish woman depressive? As my wife would say, <laughs> they're very hard to be around. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry you had to work around me on that. <laughs> yeah, I, well, should no. have, I should have taken notice of the glance. <laughs> I should have. I didn't read the room well at all there. My fault. No, I. It just. Talk, I have not watched talk to. You know, it's. I got to be honest with you. I don't watch. There are so many things I don't watch that I used to. Those talk shows I used to watch them all. Haven't seen one of them in years. Yeah, once you get past the monologue, there's not much to see. I haven't watched Saturday Night Live in I bet you 35 years. Really? I never watch. Saturday I Night still Live watch anymore. it. I. Any you know, good? everybody goes. Ah, it sucks. Ah, it's, it's terrible. It's, it's that show has always been super uneven. Watch the yeah. first no, couple it has. years, You're and right. they had some right. great bits, and then some stuff that's like, this sucks. And you, yeah. don't, you don't have to spend a lot of time watching it because they they front load it. 
Yeah, they do. So yeah. after the first yeah, few do. bits, you know, well, that's it. Weekend update, though. I think the guys well, that right. do it now, Colin Jost and uh, Michael, what's his name? I think they're Jay. great. Jay. Yeah. Yeah, they they're write some really, good jokes. They're really good. Yeah, and after, that's about the end of the show. Yeah, right it. there. You watch those first four bits, the musical performance, weekend update, and then you can turn it off. Time yeah. To go. Yeah. yeah, that's what I do, yeah. I have literally not watched it in years. I don't even know why I stopped watching it. Well, I know that hallelujah thing didn't help me at mm-hmm. all. What was that? Oh, what's her name? Kate, Kate McKinnon. McKinnon. Oh, I, I, I can't stand it. Every that's, time I, I saw her, I, 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 I mean, she's the worst. She's the, terrible. The mugging and all that A lot crap. of mugging. I, my favorite guy is Keenan Thompson, though. He's so consistently Keenan good. Thompson he is hardly good. ever You're does right. a stinky one. But. He's mid, though. Like, he, he's, the, he's a good he plays the good straight guy that's like, right yeah, yeah. and I, I think you need that but i mean like he knows where his bread's buttered that's why he doesn't go off anywhere because yeah. he's somebody that does good just baseline yeah yeah he probably wouldn't be you know he probably wouldn't have some of the success that a lot of them have had in movies but yeah, yeah. i i the last few years i was just watching mostly for cecily strong I just think she's fantastic. Oh, she's amazing. And now she's gone, so. Yeah. You know, it's hilarious. I didn't even know who that is. It's been so long I watched that show. Oh, I have she's no just idea brilliant. Well, now she's in Verizon commercials. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she is? You so can she's see probably getting that Verizon lot. money. That big V money. Mm. God, it was funny. I was telling the story yesterday. <laughs> I'm watching TV. I'm this and what. And I look up, and I said, oh, my God, there's a white man on a commercial? I haven't seen a white man on a commercial <laughs> in a long time. All of a sudden, turns out the guy... Was stealing money from everyone else. <laughs> well, of course, that's you, that's the only way you could cast it. It's just hilarious. We are so locked into that crap now; it's unbelievable. And again, I just you believe whatever you want to believe, but I, I just it was a surprise to see a honky man doing a commercial. I heard Mike Bilski on the way here. He's a white guy doing a commercial. Yeah, but I'd never show him on TV. Oh, He's just true. too arrogant looking. Yeah, you that's know. true. Um, Bilski. Eric wrote in, and I, I agree with him. Nobody beats Ricky Gervais as the host. Oh, no doubt. I agree. No doubt yeah. about it. He was so funny. Phenomenal. And, and would punch people right in the face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was and always totally punching fearless. up, which yeah. is fun. We oh, love yeah. that, right? Like yeah. Celebrities that are much more famous, have more control yeah. over his, always punching up, and I love that. Get over yourself. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> He's, like, very clear that, like, you got, nobody wants to hear your guys' opinions. He made that very clear as, uh, trust me, America is not looking towards you guys for how to live our lives. So let's uh, keep this going. It's yeah, so no, funny. He had one of the greatest yeah. lines of all time when, what's his name, Stephen Merchant, his buddy, was literally turning a pen. Oh, up. God, that, that was funny. That I scene know was, that scene. You, you know that scene? Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. So Gervais is in his office, and his receptionist secretary is Stephen Merchant. Stephen finds that if he tips the pen upside down, all the ink drains away, and the woman picture is she's naked now. Yeah. Oh, one of those. Yeah, sure. yeah one of those. You turn them upside yep. down. So it turned, he's rather attracted to the picture of the woman on the pen, so he whips it out and starts whacking a mole, right? <laughs> and just as he's kind of in the middle of it all, staring at a pen, uh, Ricky Gervais <laughs> walks out and he goes, Hey, do you know what? I, are you tossing one off to a pen? <laughs> Which I thought was so fun. funny. Are you tossing one off to a yeah, that's, So that's, when my grandfather that is desperation. My there. grandfather is, died yes. when I was about nine and he was a owned his own company. He was over the road salesman. And he was a really good dresser. I clearly didn't inhabit that. But I got his tie collection and I'm in church sitting next to my mom and one of these fifties ties and I look at it. And on the inside flap, there's a girl in a bikini. And if you turn it upside down, if you look here, you can still see the rope burns from that (laughs) tie coming off my neck. And I've never seen it again. I'm like, God, I wish I had that tie still. That's amazing. Classic 1955, right? Uh, Here's some Ricky Gervais roasting Mel Gibson. Oh, I love him. At the, I believe it was the Golden Globes. Here you go. A few years ago on this show, I made a joke about Mel Gibson getting a bit drunk and saying a few unsavory things. <laughs> Listen, I still feel a bit bad for it, right? Mel's forgotten all about it, apparently. That's what drinking does. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I love him so much. Yeah. His two new specials are fantastic, if you haven't seen them. He's one of the first people I ever saw publicly go after Weinstein. Like, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was. Yep. I yeah, that takes nev- courage. That takes. Yeah. Co- and when he was running Hollywood then, yeah. and nobody was saying anything, and he, I'd never heard anything. I was even like, "Who is this Harvey person? I don't know." Right. And yeah. That was right. The you first know time yep. ever I'd heard that, and so that's pretty brazen. No question about it. We got one minute. Who wants to wrap it up, man? Anyone? Dougie. Well, I'm not going to wrap it up because I'm just You're getting, our special guest. I'm just warming up for the next show. Oh, yeah. I'm in the bullpen right now. We're just Sorry, I didn't I'm know we were just started. your warm-up. I yeah. didn't know that this little thing we have oh, going Mickey, is Oh, Mickey, your you're little... so fine. You're so fine. You blew my mind. Hey, hey Mickey. Mickey. Guys, I, I like, feel like it. I say a diss. I look amazing. Do you, I think it's cool. <laughs> I think it's cool. When Thanks. you stood up, I'm like that. It's a tennis skirt. Yeah. And it's a running oh, it's skirt. Not, it's cheerleader. Well, go team go. Go team go. <laughs> you wondered why I was uh, such a big fan of tennis. Oh, ah, I understand. I yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I That's why I hung that. out at the club. Because he, uh, he yeah. loves the skirts to wear. <laughs> I still love. Okay, well, we can close with this. I, I was envious, yeah. of course. Gel fan skirt chaser. Second, About like, 35 years ago. Gelfan calls me and goes, hey, you want to go shoot some baskets over at the JCC? I said, yeah, that sounds good. So I meet him over at the JCC, and we're shooting baskets. And I look up, and there's a sign on the wall. And I said, are you pulling my tit with this? I'm at the JCC, the Jewish Community Center, and there's a sign that says, no dunking. <laughs> <laughs> what? You know, you know what I attribute that sign to? <laughs> I'll tell you what I attribute that sign to. Recessive genes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll close with that. Thank you, Michael. That'll do it.